Rocket scientists talk about deadlines. Dr. Abramchikov, where do you plan to put your groundbreaking new analysis method into practice? Are you in touch with the Metropolitan Museum? As the whole project would never have got off the ground without the support of the Russian government, we will of course start here at the State Hermitage Museum in Petersburg. will come, but not at once. That could be enough for us. All right, but we must not draw attention to ourselves. I understand. An unhappy coincidence. It must look like an accident. Yes, the sea would be suitable. Be careful and remember, those who are without doubt will be rewarded. sad story has got its beginning, its time and place, its tragic characters and its puppet masters. Our story began with a phone call. You've got one new message. Austin Kovic here. Call me immediately. I repeat, immediately. As soon as you get this message. And Svetlova, get ready to give me a clever explanation for why your cell phone is off all the time. Use your cell phone so that we don't have to go through the identification procedure. Hmm. Sergei Vasily Ostankovich, Colonel of Russian Militia. My former boss at Department 12, Art Forgery and Theft, before I transferred to Interpol. Certainly a man with no sense of humor. Quite clearly in top form again. And the fact he's getting in touch with me here in Lyon doesn't imply anything good. I really have to find my cell phone and call Ostankovich immediately. When I moved in here, this bookcase was nearly empty. I filled it up in no time. I've got a thing about books. A book called The Tales and Myths of Antiquity. Greek gods, heroes, monsters. I loved this, even when I was a little girl. Prometheus brings fire to people and is punished. Sure, no good deed goes unpunished. The more things change, the more they stay the same. An empty CD cover. Hmm, I wonder what I can use it for. A book called The Tales and Myths of Antiquity. Greek gods, heroes, monsters. I loved this, 
even when I was a little girl. When Oedipus came to the city of Thebes, great grief reigned there. The city was tormented by the Sphinx, and it grieved the death of King Laos. Some private notes and newspaper articles. Well, this was a good one. Van Klept was a broker in forgeries. I don't see the point moving the bin around in my apartment and revealing the ugly socket behind it without any reason. The charger will come in handy. These days I charge the phone more frequently than I use it to make calls. The battery is finished. A permanent pen can always be put to use. The computer crashed a few days ago. Now it won't boot. But why have it repaired? I have a computer at the office and I'm there most of the time. The album Muriel lent me. I have to give it back to Muriel or I'll have one less friend. That means none. From the scene near DeWitt Clinton Park, the man was identified as Anatoly Abramchikov, a Russian scientist lecturing at a scientific symposium in New York. Police are investigating the case, but so far no signs of violence have been found. In the next item, we'll be talking to Professor Yuli Yachenkov, great work friend and colleague of Anatoly Abramchikov's. He'll be on the line from Moscow. Oh, my Lord, Abramchikov. That Abramchikov dead. I talked to him a few times when I was in Petersburg. He was going to lecture here on his new analysis method in two weeks. This is a really bad day. This box holds my nightmares. Unpaid bills, reminders, as if the paperwork at the Interpol wasn't enough. Modern art. Hard to say what it actually is. However, it's a gift, it's fashionable, and I guess it's really expensive. A picture of Hermiona. I found her outside our house in Petersburg. Poor Hermiona. That's where my cell phone is. My cell phone. Sadly, only with a few contacts saved. Ah, doesn't matter anyhow. Most people I have to contact are colleagues at work, and I can reach them over the office phone line. And, of course, my cell phone is flat again. Oh, damn it. The battery is really no good. How am I to work without a proper phone? Look, there's a socket right behind the bin. What a surprise! An ordinary permanent pen. People use it to write on glass, paper, photos, cloth, pretty much on everything. Good. The charger's in the socket. I don't even know why I bother unplugging it and putting it away. The phone should stay charged for at least three days. But at the moment, I need to recharge it twice a day. Good. We'll see what that terrible battery can hold.
Well, the phone could be at least partially charged now. The battery is the same piece of junk as before, but it might just last a few phone calls. Finally. You must have time on your hands in Leon. Why let the ringing of a cell phone bother you, right? The guys in the technical department of Interpol, especially Jennings, are unfortunately unable to repair my cell phone at the moment. Normally I'm accessible all the time, of course. What happened? Everything I tell you now is strictly confidential. It stays between you and me. No colleagues, no departmental memos, no recordings, nothing. Do we understand each other? Well, if it's nothing illegal... Don't make me angry, Svetlova. This matter is too serious. Last night, the security system in the St. Petersburg State Hermitage Museum was out of order for several minutes. Fortunately, the outer perimeter remained functional and its cameras didn't record anything unusual. That's a nuisance. But if nobody entered the museum, then nothing could be taken either, could it? I personally examined the place. My initial impression was that nothing significant was missing. But I've got a feeling that something is. No one could give me a good explanation as to how both the main and backup security circuit stopped working at the same time. If everything is in its place, then it could only mean something's been exchanged for a fake. However, there is nothing on the outer cameras, so the culprit and what he stole would have to still be in the museum. How about a thorough search of the place? Are you mad? Do you understand what a scandal it would be? A week after they were praising me in the press for my fine work. Front page in our most popular daily. And with me about to be awarded the Medal of Honor. No, we must keep it secret. We must find out whether something has really happened without an official investigation. That means I want to have Max Durand here in St. Petersburg as soon as possible. But how can he help you there? If you can't even support him officially, he won't be able to do anything. Listen to me closely. Sure, you're working for Interpol now and no longer for Department 12. So I'm no longer your superior. But I still have enough influence to have you lose your job. You better not forget the interests of your motherland take all precedence. Therefore, be so kind and don't question my decision. Get Durand for me. And if he's hesitant, tell him that I have his file on my table. I can still change my mind about our mutual cooperation. Remind him I could have him arrested and locked up for a very long time. Not to mention that sometimes terrible accidents can happen in prison. Damn the battery's flat. Now of all times. I wonder how they would like it at the technical department when I whack their heads with that junk of a battery. God knows when I send the application for a new one. Damn it, Ostankovich will go ballistic if I don't get Max. Without a working cell phone, I must try to contact him from my office. Leon, my current residence. I haven't seen it at all yet. Most of my time is eaten up by work, and to make things worse, Ostankovich calls. Remy. He jokes all the time. Hi, long time no see, Damien. Have you been on holiday? Nothing escapes you. I was on the Canary Islands for a week. Very touristy, but uh, at least it was warm. <laughs> I would go again right now. Uh, I was wondering, do you happen to know Muriel? Petite, dark-haired. She works here at the telephone exchange. I, uh, I haven't even noticed anyone like that here. Hold on. Doesn't she mean the one who comes here for her cigarette break? Come on. She looks totally different. Why are you asking, anyway? She went on holiday at the same time you did, and she was in the Canary Islands as well. She wouldn't tell me who she was going with, 
So I was thinking that maybe, by pure coincidence, you met there? No. I can't remember her. I haven't seen her around. Well, how could you, when you say that you don't even know what she looks like? Well, uh, Remy, have the Germans arrived? Excuse me, miss, but uh, we are expecting a delegation from Bonn. Germans? Are they really supposed to come today? Uh, yeah, yeah, yes, of course. Uh, I'll explain it to you straight away. So, uh, chatting about the girl working at the telephone exchange, has to wait. I am sorry. Sure, Damien. Of course. Theoretically, tourists could sit around here, if there was anything to see, and if the security didn't send them away immediately. Without a single scrap of paper, Security checks everything all the time because of possible attacks. There are two things that keep me awake during a long night working overtime. Sugar and chocolate bars. A detailed list of all the departments in this building. I must get Max. I hope he's at home, or at least in the town somewhere. Here you can find documents for various cases, regulations and directives. However, most of it is accessible online. Just another month full of work, and then another, and another. It's empty. I haven't found time to have it filled yet. I don't see a reason to take anything off the notice board. A common electric socket. We have the same thing back in Russia. Our yearly assessments. Most of my achievements are filed under the result of working in a tightly knit team of the very best people. <laughs> Interesting how our successes are a result of teamwork, and our failures are the products of individual efforts around here. Max has cancelled more meetings than I can count. Right now he's busy working for the University of Toulouse. Next time it might be Paris. It seems I'm standing in for Pierre again. I should get it done as soon as possible, or the boss will go wild. Maybe later. I don't think there's a reason to write this email. There's enough spam around already. There's no need to write to him again. All I wanted was a translation from Portuguese, but I managed without him.
I don't know what to write now. Maybe later. So, Max is somewhere at the university in Toulouse and his cell phone is off. Great. And I need to speak with him as soon as possible. That sounds like a perfect job for my friend Muriel working at the switchboard. And that's exactly why she works there. Technical department, Jennings speaking. Svetlova, SWOA. I need a new cell phone battery. Well, if it goes that flat, try to survive a few more days. Some new phones should be arriving shortly. It doesn't go flat quickly. It doesn't work at all. How am I to do anything with a phone that's no good? Do you know how much I have on my plate right now? And you're bothering me about a battery for your phone? Fine, but if somebody can't find me when they need me and something goes wrong, I'll make sure the department knows whose fault it is. Do we understand each other? Okay, then. Just stay calm. If it's really that urgent, I'll get it to you as soon as possible. I'm just completing the issue slip now. We don't have to argue or send complaints, do we? Look, I just have to do some urgent work for your friend Pierre in the lab. If the new battery isn't on my desk by the time I'm finished, I'll immediately lodge a complaint. Goodbye. Telephone exchange, how can I help you? Hi, Muriel. This is Lara. Have you got a minute? Sure. It's busy today, but of course I'm here for my friends. Anything new? Mm, not much. Look, I need something. Could you get me through to someone? That's what I'm here for. <laughs> but it isn't one of us. Also, it's not an official matter. It's Max Giron, a friend of mine. He is lecturing at the Toulouse University at the moment. Typical. Of course, when I want something from you, you just ignore me. You think I'd forget my best friend? I've got the CD with me. You know what? I'll send someone to you with it. Lara, you never change. That's what you said last time. I'm sorry, I have to go. Someone has just come in. What's that? Someone's finally coming to do Monsieur Bouillet's work. But it's just not him. He asked me to help as a friend. That's how things are in life. But you wouldn't understand that, Demer. You'd have to have friends first. Friends? All oh, right. Uh, you mean those people who keep telling you things you don't care about and then make you do their work? No, I really don't have friends. Oh, God, how could I have missed so much all my life? I don't see anything to erase. There are no pen markings here. If this is a forgery, then there must be things that differ from the original. I should mark them somehow. Now I've got everything I need. Let's get the job done. The job which Pierre was to do, of course, and which, as usual, I have to do.
Well, I'd better start all over again. So many mistakes. I should tell Pierre. So many mistakes? The forger couldn't have been serious. I should check it again. So many mistakes? Well, I'd better start all over again. So many mistakes. I should tell Pierre. Right, this should be enough. It's obviously a fake, perhaps even a joke. I should write Pierre the email to let him know it's done. I doubt anything could happen to anybody in this place, but regulations are regulations. Some chemical agents used for analysis. Fortunately, this isn't part of my job. I don't think I need to test anything right now. For some things you really need a lot of light. Unfortunately these lights heat as much as they illuminate. In summer it must be unbearable in here. We saw Helium gas. Listen, I don't really have time for this now. You want to speak about Abramchikov, I suppose. There's no major report today. That's a terrible loss, isn't it? No, I don't think so. Anything else? Nothing. Only that you are stupid and arrogant. Yes, of course. And now that you've told me all about myself, could you be so kind as to let me get on with my work? It's strange you can't see the periodic table around here. You know, up till now, I had thought that only the English possessed your wonderful talent for observation and humor. I don't think there's a reason to write this email. There's enough spam around already.
As long as the equipment works properly, I definitely don't want to call this number. Here's the new battery for your phone. Keep the old one if you like. Signed by Jennings. See? Where there's a will, there's a way. A cell phone battery. I can't believe it turned up. The CD I borrowed from Muriel. Unfortunately, that was two months ago and I forgot about it. The phone is totally dead now. I really can't make phone calls from it. Ah, seems I should check my email inbox. A CD cover. It's empty. I'd better just pass in the CD for Muriel. Damien, I need a favor from you. Of course, Miss Svedlova. I've got a CD here for my friend Muriel from the telephone exchange. I think you know who I mean. Could you give it to her the next time you see her? Well, I finish work before she does. Something tells me you might meet later, after work. No, no. Someone's hiding something from old friends. But Rene, don't be foolish. Miss Svetlova, if you're hinting that uh, Muriel and I, you know how such things are viewed at work. Relationships between co-workers are frowned upon. I'm not hinting at anything, but it's a small world. Perhaps you'll meet by chance. Oh, <laughs> that'd be a real coincidence, wouldn't it? Well, theoretically it's possible. If I happen to see her, I'll pass it on to her. Thanks, Damien. See you, Remy.
there's no need to write to him again. All I wanted was a translation from Portuguese, but I managed without him. Telephone exchange, how can I help you? Hi, this is Lara. I left a CD with someone you might meet at work, by sheer chance. You are a terrible snoop. How did you find out? I've got eyes, Muriel. Will you get me Duran's number now? Hey, who do you think I am? I started looking for him as soon as you called me. He's waiting on the line, but he doesn't sound very enthusiastic. You're amazing. Let me speak to him, please. Well, what's going on? Is this some kind of a joke? You pulled me out of a lecture. You know how long I waited for this chance. Do you know that if things go well, this could be regular for me? Max, Ostankovich called. You've got to fly to Petersburg. Tell him I can come next Thursday. You don't understand. You must fly today as soon as possible. What? He's not kidding, Max. He's in a fix and he needs your help. If you don't go, he'll ruin you. You know he's capable of that. So I have to drop everything just because Ostankovich has got himself a problem. We both know you don't have a choice. Come back to Leon. We'll meet at the park and talk it through. I'm sorry, but there's nothing else you can do. But I... Hurry up and get the next plane. From the airport, go directly to the park. We'll meet there. See you later. I'm glad you... One reason. Give me one good reason why I should come running like a dog every time you or Ostankovich calls. Max, we both know the reason. You can't afford not to obey him. I made one mistake. I've helped him many times. How long will this go on? You didn't just make a mistake, Max. You made a huge mistake. You forged paintings worth millions of dollars and sold them to get-rich-quick fund managers. And you got caught, trying to sell a forgery to the Hermitage. That's plain madness. Look, I'm grateful to you for persuading Ostankovich to keep me out of jail, but I think I've made up for it. The case can be opened again any time, and he's capable of doing that. Until the file is officially closed, you have no choice. I promise that if you help him one more time, I'll do my best to get you off the hook. There's been some trouble at the Hermitage. He probably needs an expert. Well, I don't have much choice anyway, do I? Damn it, all right then, I'll go. Don't worry about your visa. You're traveling with special permission. Ostankovich has fixed it already. When it comes to manipulating the system, nobody matches my old commanding officer. Now that's always good to know. Have fun here. I'll be thinking about you. Take care. Caught between the West and the East, Pulled by the leash of past sins. Who holds your fate in their hands, Max? There's a shadow rising above you. It's good that you don't see it. For now. Back in the city upon the Neva. Can you see it flowing into the distance? It will never return once it passes a place. Just like you, Max. Pulled by a dark current, ending beyond the horizon. Hello. Please, have a seat. Colonel Ostankovich has no time at the moment. I believe he is already waiting for me. So, you must be Mr. Durant then. I hope you had a pleasant journey. Not that, but the one out of here will certainly be better. I see. Well, the Colonel is expecting you. I expected you sooner. If I had a choice, I wouldn't be here at all. You see that file on the table? It's your criminal record. And it says that refusing to help me could have rather dramatic consequences for you. 
I've helped enough for you to close the case, haven't I? Listen, Durand. We all have nightmares. Yours is needing to help us. Mine is the reason for calling you. Help me get rid of mine, and I'll get rid of yours. Then we'll both be able to sleep soundly. So that's it? The file on the table is just a copy. Take it. If you help me, you can have the original, and I'll personally take care of the computer records. Well, I don't really have a choice, do I? Exactly. So now listen to me well. I won't waste time with threats. You already know what I can send you. This whole matter is top secret, so hold your tongue, got that? Sure. Last night, the security system in the State Hermitage Museum stopped working for a time. Cameras, detectors, everything went blind. The external system worked, so we know nobody went in. You know how unlikely it is that everything on the inner circuit, including the backup sources, would fail? Next to impossible. Well, if something's happened there, an insider must have done it. A guard. Someone who hid himself in there. I'm certain that nobody took anything out. I was personally present during the preliminary investigation. Nothing's missing from the collection. So possibly it's an exchange. Why keep it secret? We can't go public with this. I am personally responsible for the collection. I chose the whole security system for the Hermitage. I chose the entire staff. Soon I am to receive an award for my service at the Hermitage. A medal, Durand, from the President. But if it came to light that one of them tried to steal something in the museum... I get that, but what do you want from me? On the table, there is a permit to go into the Hermitage. I now have it guarded even from outside by a guy with the same temperament as a bulldog. Remember to be nice to him to get inside. Then phone me. And what can I do there? Leave that to me. Just get into the museum and call me back. My file. The only reason why I have to obey Ostankovich. I can't imagine what Ostankovich needs a globe for. Durand, wouldn't you like to go now? It says internal communication in Cyrillic, and then there's something scribbled by hand. A pass to the Hermitage. I will certainly need that. Durand, wouldn't you like to go now? An old gas lighter. Probably a Russian copy of an American one. Astankovich probably uses this to offer tea to his more important guests. It won't be Pushkin. Perhaps a statesman. your end. Wouldn't you like to go now? Ostan Kovic, a ghost from my past. Thanks to the file he's got on me, I have to help out his department from time to time. Unofficially, of course. Is it important, your end? Or do you just want to waste my time for no good reason? I doubt I'll discover anything in the gallery tonight, but I'll do my best. You'd better. Don't forget what's on your file, Duran. How could I? Leave! I don't want to spend the whole night in the office because of you. A reproduction, obviously, but a good one. I don't think I need to call anyone in Petersburg. Ah, the 1500. I've read about it. 
This tinny beast could be a hundred years old for all I know, but when the temperature hits minus 30, it's certainly the right car for the job. Modern art has always fascinated me. To create things you only need a garage, a blowtorch and a pile of junk. Some artists want to express only the essential things. I wonder what Lara would think of this philosophy of art. The simplicity of shapes in contrast to the historic courtyard of the Winter Palace. I think I know what the artist wanted to say. It looks like the guard isn't very enthusiastic about his duty. He's obviously quite cold. He's holding an unlit cigarette. The program of events at the Hermitage. I need to get inside. I don't care what you need. You mustn't go any further. I need to get inside. I don't care. A permit issued by Ostankovich. I can go in. I have a permit. Show it to me. Well, I doubt that I'm standing here all night long looking forward to smoking another one in the rain and cold so that the damned American could have a private nocturnal tour. I'm French. French, German, or American. <laughs> I don't give a damn. There's something strange about this permit. And nobody told me to let anybody inside. Look, I don't enjoy being here any more than you do, but unfortunately, just like you, I have no choice. We don't have to make life difficult for each other, do we? This permit was issued by your superior. I think you should do what it says. So, now you're telling me what to do. Like I said before, this permit is just a shred of drenched paper. And nobody told me to expect visitors. Unless somebody gives me different orders, it's too bad for you. Ostankovich, can't he leave me alone for a second? I need to get inside. I don't care what you need. You mustn't go any further. Are you there yet? I'm out front, but I've got a problem. The guard won't let me in. Of course he won't just let you in. Show him the permit. Use your brains. But I have shown... Oh, he hung up. Damn. What now? Ostankovich, can't he leave me alone for a second? Are you there yet? I'm out front, but I've got a problem. The guard won't let me in. Of course he won't just let you in. Show him the permit. Use your brains. But I have shown... Oh, he hung up. Damn, what now? Would you like a light? I'm really sorry that you're stuck here, but if you think you're the only one Ostankovich jerks around, you're wrong. You can go home and sleep in the morning. I don't have it so easy. Let me inside. You know the permit is genuine. Okay then. Just go. Eh, what a life.
can't just leave like that. Ostankovich will ruin me. Darkness everywhere. A storm outside. I can think of more pleasant places to spend the night. I'm curious what Ostankovich wants me to do here. To find out, I should call him. Third, perhaps fourth century before Christ. A nice piece. Original, most likely. Take this amphora, for example. Even if it was fake, how could I tell in the dark? Ostankovich must have gone nuts. Nobody's going to steal this, really. I'd bet my life on that. Petersburg's out there. Ostankovich's realm. I don't think I want to open the window. It's raining outside and it will be locked. Well, at least I can get a strong enough signal here to make a phone call. Let's hope it doesn't fade. Here I am. Why did it take you so long? Don't try my patience, Durand. I have two jobs for you now. I don't trust the security system anymore. I've had the internal monitor switched off completely. My men are stationed outside the Hermitage, although they don't know why. Sad to say, you're the only person I can trust. I want you to go in tonight and take a very close look around at absolutely everything. So I am a security guard now. What am I supposed to do? Spend the whole night walking around, shining my flashlight at things, looking for intruders? Of course not. You wouldn't make much of a security guard, would you? Take a look around. Cast your expert eye over things, to be more precise over everything. And you better do a good job. You've only got this one night, and that's going to take some explaining. You've dragged me all the way from France so I can walk through a museum all night long? Spare me your hysteria, Durand. Now for your second task. I need you to examine the precious items in the museum and try to find traces of tampering. Ensure they are not counterfeits. You sure you don't have a third job? Irrigate Africa before sunrise, Durand? You need labs and machinery for those sorts of tests. They can take days, weeks even. And you want me to look at dozens of paintings in the dark? And I'm only talking about the most expensive ones here. And tell you whether it's a forgery? You should have called a magician, not me. Yes, yes, I am sure there will be a few small difficulties. That's good reason to start right away. If you find something, call me immediately. I know who painted these paintings, when they were painted, what colors were used. But whether one of them is a forgery, no way. Not without specialized equipment. The rest of the corridor is closed off. According to what it says here, the exhibition will be open again in 14 days. Restoration work is in progress. Yes, I can see an empty wall at the end of the corridor. 
It's useless, no point to it. What the hell does he think I'll find here? It's high time I call Astankovich and tell him that this whole undertaking is absurd. What have you found? It seems a little soon for you to be calling. Look, I've gone through the exhibits, but without proper examination I have no way of finding anything out. The only thing that struck me is that closed corridor in the hall of Peter the Great. What happened to the painting? The day before yesterday the frame of the painting was damaged. Fortunately, the canvas survived and the work is being restored. Probably a vandal. Could it be related to yesterday's system crash? Maybe it was a test to check how well the security system works. I must say it sounds intriguing. I'll definitely have it looked into. So, we can talk about this like reasonable people. And you'll forget about that idea. To be here. Duran? Hello, are you there? What's going on? Duran! Stop! Hey, stop! What was that? Someone's there. What? Somebody ran through here a moment ago and knocked down the barriers, but now he's gone. The corridor leads to the Hall of Peter the Great and doesn't go any further. That's really strange. The person must have disappeared there. An iron hook on which to hang a rope. I can't unscrew it, it's too tight. A strong piece of rope. Maybe I'll need it. A strong piece of rope. Maybe I'll need it. What's going on here? Someone ran by me a moment ago and I don't think he could walk through walls. I can't see much to examine here. There was a painting here? It's no longer here. It's simple. And it's too dark to see more details of the wall. This painting is being restored. There is a sign beside the barriers. A bit of light could help. The flame. There's a draft coming from the bottom of the wall. Sure, there must be a secret door in this wall. But how will it open? Something's telling me the gap at the bottom of the wall has something to do with opening the secret door. I can't just open the secret door that easily. There's a secret door in the wall. I found it just by chance. The gap under the door is too narrow. My fingers won't go through. I need something thinner. Now, 
Where will the secret door lead to? The door closed itself automatically. If someone attacks me here, Ostankovic and his people won't ever find out. This would be the mechanism that opens the door from inside. Looks like it was fixed recently. A piece of stone from the floor. Everything looks really run down and unsafe. It's a bit rusty. I can't do much about it. I'm actually not sure what these rotten rags were supposed to insulate. Surprisingly, the rags are quite dry. I'll see if I can use them for something. Old pipes, secured with a metal bracket. I need to loosen this somehow. The pipes are all rusty. Hardly anything will flow through them. It won't matter if I take a piece of the bracket. The door looks solid and has no handle. There must be a different way to open it. Now the door won't shut on me. The handrail looks quite solid. More solid than the ladder, that's for sure. Everything looks really run down and unsafe. Goodness, that was close. I could have got killed. Why hasn't this happened to the person who was here before me? Luck is really not on my side. I'm not climbing down there before I fix the ladder.
A nice torch. It probably won't burn for long, but it should help to see what's down the ladder. At first glance, it looks safe down there, and the corridor goes further. It doesn't look like there was somebody hiding behind it. They'll go out in a moment. I should hurry up. Hey, stay where you are. Don't come any closer. I mean it. Wasn't that loose ladder enough? Freeze! Step away from the painting, or I'll shoot! <laughs> that wasn't the best idea. If only I knew for certain that there was some connection between them and Ostankovich. The man is wearing a monk's habit or something very like it. What have I got myself into? Hey! Police! Stay where you are! God, what am I trying to do? Still, maybe if I catch him, Ostankovich will be satisfied. Don't move! I've got a gun. I'm going to come over to you. No tricks, or I will use it. Stop! Don't move! Damn, I hope he's not armed. Leave the painting where it is. Max should have contacted me ages ago. He's been away for more than a day. Where are you, Max? Damn! Svetlova, SWOA. It's Pierre here. Please, Lara. Well, well, look who's calling now. Maybe you should show up for work sometime. The analysis I did for you yesterday. And that's what I want to talk about. Demer told the boss that I had you do it. Fortunately, it was an excellent job, so Charlotte was happy. She knows you did it. It will help your career one day. No, to je skvělé. Takže nakonec existuje něco jako karma. Udělej něco dobrého a ono se ti to vrátí. Vidíš, když už tě mám na drátě, taky bych něco potřebovala. Pracoval si chvíli ve státech, že? Dokázal bys sehnat nějaké podrobnosti o smrti profesora Abramčikova? Sure, why not? I still have some contacts. Why don't you claim it by yourself as an official Antarpol request? No, it's not an official matter. I just have bad feeling. I knew him personally. Ah, uh, I'm sorry. I will check it out, of course. It may take a bit of time because I'm not in Lyon at the moment. Uh, by the way, that's exactly why I called you. I need again your help in the lab. Okay, looks like we have a deal. You will send me what you figured out on Abramchikov, and I will solve your little problem in the lab. What do you need? There's a new chromatograph in the lab. Charlotte wants to have an analysis of the forgery to get more information. Demer will do the analysis, but you have to calibrate the chromatograph. It shouldn't be a problem. Well, I think I'll manage with the handbook. Oh, hello. The manual is missing, but I'm sure you can handle this. The basic instructions are in the database. I have to run. Bye for now. Pierre. Pierre. 
Damn it. At least Pierre put some information on the chromatograph for me in the database. As far as I know Pierre, that should be helpful. Now, where's the chromatograph? Our new chromatograph. I hope it lasts longer than that wreck we had before. Warning. At the first calibration of the device, it is necessary to choose the calibration protocol 3. There's no reason for it to be turned off. It's always better to switch on the machine before you press anything. It's always better to switch on the machine before you press anything. Warning, at the first... Good. That's that done. Next time we should insist on the manual along with the machine. Ah. Seems I should check my email inbox. It really looks like it was a tragic coincidence. Professor, you didn't deserve such an end. How many times did I tell you that those night walks would be the death of you?
Colonel Ostankovich is on the phone. Good morning, Colonel. Did you find anything? Laura, Max had an accident. I think you should know. An accident? What, what accident? Is he all right? He found some long-forgotten underground area in the Hermitage. He shouldn't have gone there at all. And what happened to him? He fell into the water there. We found him shortly after that happened. Oh my god. Is he alive? It would be best if you came here at once. Come to my office. I must go now. Ostankovich! Is he alive? What's the matter with him? Ostankovich! Oh my god! Ostankovich! I got on the first plane. What's the matter with him? Is he alive? He's in the intensive care unit. He hasn't woken up yet. Apparently, he was under the water for some time, and the doctors are afraid of potential brain damage from oxygen deprivation. Fortunately, the water was ice cold. That slowed down his vital functions. Perhaps if someone he knows was around, it might help us to wake him up. And how did it actually happen? He called me from the hermitage. The call was cut off. Somehow he'd found a hidden door leading down to the hermitage cellars, where the most precious works used to be hidden during the war. He went down there on his own and he fell into deep water. Good thing he had enough sense to wedge the secret door open. Otherwise, he would probably be dead now. It seems strange that he would just hang up to go to examine the cellars. That's not like Max. At the moment, there's nothing. Hang on. Ostankovich. Yes, of course. Can he be moved? Good, thanks. The hospital? Yes, he's over the worst of it. He even came to his senses for a while. There doesn't seem to be any long-term damage. Now we need to get him somewhere peaceful and quiet. Thank God. We could take him to my old flat. When I'm in France, only my aunt lives there. That's not a bad idea. I'll arrange it. He's really lucky. If he hadn't gone to the Hermitage in the first place, he wouldn't need luck. You just won't stop, will you? If your attitude... Look, he's waking up. Where am I? What happened? Shh, don't tire yourself out. You're safe. Everything is all right. Am I in Petersburg? What are you doing here? You had an accident in the Hermitage. For a while, it didn't look so good for you, so I had her come here. The Hermitage? I wanted to call you. Oh my god! That monk! There was a man there. He's delirious. He was all alone in the building. No. No, you don't understand. There was a man in monk's clothes, and he was taking a painting by Delaroche, the one that should hang in the gallery. I followed him, and he found the secret passage. But then he escaped. A monk? I should call the hospital and find out if these could be hallucinations or memory problems. Head trauma can cause that. He could hardly have hallucinated the secret passage. And as for the painting, better check that there isn't a forgery hanging in your gallery. Of course, but I'll have to arrange it in a way that doesn't cause too much stir. In any case, I won't need you here any longer. You can go back to Leon. I'd rather stay with him until he recovers more. Your concern for him is certainly touching. But your presence here could draw the attention of Interpol to what happened here. You don't have to worry about him. He's important to me. I'll look after him myself. Max. Max, what did we get ourselves into? Take care of yourself here. When you wake up, I'll be back in Leon. I will tell my aunt that you will stay here for a few days.
An old family keepsake. I remember my mum making tea for me in it. I used to play, but that was ages ago. I'd better not even try. My aunt, dad and I never had a lot of kitchenware, so there's probably just a lot of junk. My good old console. Not top of the range, but at least it's hooked to the internet. I remember when we first got the internet connection. I used to sit here for two days straight without sleep. So much information all in one place. My old notebook, from back when I didn't use PDAs and other gadgets. I'd better let him sleep. I like my aunt, but her world is full of ghosts and the supernatural. Well, I guess it's too late to try to change her. When I was little, my aunt would put my hair in plaits in front of this mirror. I can still remember it. My tarot readings were never favorable. Moreover, their predictions usually came true. My aunt never really recovered from Sergei's death. No wonder, she lost her only son. Perhaps that's why she refuses to let go of all that occult nonsense. I've already offered to buy a decent TV for her. But would she agree? Her son bought her this from the Congo when he was there with his unit. It's one of the few things of his that she has. Auntie is a bit strange. She withdrew a lot after Sergei was killed in Afghanistan. He looks a bit like Sergei, don't you think? Although he was a bit taller and had fair hair. Maybe a little bit. So you don't mind him staying here for a while? Of course not. You have feelings for him, don't you? I feel responsible for him. He's in this mess because of me. There's something strange about him. But I think you would make a nice couple. You think so? Max and me? No, it would never work, I'm sure. You are too transparent, my little girl. How on earth can you be a policewoman? You're the only one who takes me for a little girl these days. But let's stop this. You will look after him, won't you? And don't scare him, no cards. The cards were good for your grandma, your mama, and for me too. Perhaps you should change your mind about them, Laura. We've been through this before. Let's leave it for another day, shall we? I've got to go now. Take care. Take care, Max. Dreams. Windows into other worlds, into pleasant memories, into the darkest corners of the conscience. We don't choose dreams. They choose us.
Are you finally up and about? You are always a world-class sleeper, but a whole day? That's impressive even by your standards. And I see you haven't lost your taste for childish humor. How did you get here, Andre? Lara called me. She said my big brother was on the verge of dying. So naturally, I jumped on the first plane here. I was worried I might need to donate my blood or a kidney or something. But here you are, sleeping away. You shouldn't have come. I'm up to my neck in something scary. Still the overprotective older brother, eh? <laughs> I took time off and I'm staying here until you go home. I'm being forced into this by the cops. And you know why. I can't just leave. Well, that's another reason for me to stick around and keep you out of trouble. I'm staying and that's final. Now, how about getting some fresh air? It'll do you good. I had a terrible dream. Do you remember how you fell into the lake? It's a bad omen. To tell the truth, I've got better memories. And you can't scare me away with talk of bad omens either. Now, move it. We won't get anywhere by standing around chatting. And now it's one thing after the other. What do they want from you? Well, it'll take a long time to explain. And do you have anything to drink here? I haven't had a drop since I landed. Damn it, Andre, how do you manage to make everything seem so banal? Make yourself at home, brother, and tell me everything. You're driving me crazy. Good. There were two break-ins in the Hermitage on two consecutive nights. On top of that, I was there at the time of the second break-in. Sure. And you finished off your party with the thieves with a nice cool bath. Lara told me all about it. Hmm. In any case, at the last moment, I caught a glimpse of the stolen painting, The Christian Martyr, by Paul de la Roche. That's a great clue. Now all you have to do is find out who would be interested in the work of art. That's just it. Hundreds of traffickers and collectors would be interested in such a painting. It's just too large a group of people. Hey, don't think like a policeman. After all, you sold paintings yourself. Think like a criminal. Are you going to hold that over me for the rest of my life? Wait, Andre, you are right. This could really lead us somewhere. I just need to find out who specializes in the 19th century. I still have the email address of an old contact, Malvin. He should be able to gather some interesting information. Exactly, because the seller will need an expert to assess the work. See, you'll figure it out yourself in the end. Let's get down to work now. Thanks. You really helped me. Please hold on a second. Let me write the mail to Malvin, and then I will come back to you. I have something else on my mind to talk about. This is my brother, Andre. Although he tends to be overly responsible, I like him. Perhaps they left some food for me in the fridge. Hmm, not much, that's a pity. Hmm. A can of green spray paint. Hmm, it hasn't been used for a long time. The nozzle is blocked up. Well, it might be useful for something. Light green paint in a half-used spray can. A samovar. A peculiar thing. I'm probably a barbarian, but I prefer tea bags and an electric kettle. There's just some kitchenware in the cupboard. That must be Lara's notebook. 
Well, Lara doesn't need it, and I could use it. Malvin doesn't like to get mail reminding him of the past, but I lost my cell phone beneath the hermitage, and my address book is back in France, so I don't have a lot of choice. Join the rest of us in the 21st century. You can go through your contacts from the computer here. Russia isn't in the Dark Ages. Just forget I said it. Thanks. Ordinary cutlery, nothing special. This is the new phone from Lara. My previous phone must be on its way out to sea by now. This, this. Max, your cell phone is somewhere beneath the Hermitage. So take this one. I've saved two numbers on it. Mine and Ostankovich's. Add the rest yourself, if you like. Maybe later. I'll write to her as soon as I have more information. A crystal ball. Do people really still believe in that nonsense? Quite a nice mirror with drawers. There's some old photographs under the frame. It says Sergei here. I think Lara said he died quite young. Uh, it looks like an African ritual mask. How could such a thing get here? Lara's aunt seems like a nice old lady, but she's got a strange look in her eyes, and not exactly a pleasant one. Good morning. I'm Maxime Durand. Lara told me I could stay here for a while. Of course I welcome you to our humble abode. Tell me, do you believe in a higher power, in fate? No, I don't trust in such things. Not since a certain time. Oh. What happened to you? I don't like talking about it. Never mind. Uh, but since you don't believe in anything, you won't mind my telling your fortune from the cards? Well, why not? I'm your guest, so I won't decline. Great. Come closer, then. Don't be afraid. You see? Greater Arcana. Your past, present, and future. All in 21 cards. The wisdom of the ages. Well, I should tell you up front that I don't really believe in such things. Ah, you say you don't believe. 
but I can sense your fear. You don't need to be ashamed. Very few can look at their fate without trembling. <laughs> it's all nonsense. Has anything that you ever predicted come true? I knew my son would die. I knew when and I knew how. I... I'm sorry. I didn't know. I didn't mean to. It's all in the past. What will you do? Are you going to take a card? The Hanged Man. Number 12. Planet Neptune. The Hebrew letter Mem. The man hanging upside down is Odin. He sacrificed himself for knowledge, hung upside down for nine days, weak and hurt. And then illumination came. He understood the meaning of the runes that he was searching for. And what does that have to do with me? Illumination is awaiting you, knowledge. But it will come at a cost. You'll have to pay for it. Sooner or later. Just like he did, you'll pass a test. Take another card. Number six, Valve. The High Priest. He who stands on the borders of two worlds. Of this world, and the spiritual world to which he holds the key. He possesses a secret. But that's not you. It's someone you will meet. Someone new. Someone who knows the path. Next card. The world. The last 21st card. In the Kabbalah, it's called Tav. It symbolizes a perfect union, but also a transition. The end of one cycle and the beginning of the next one. The highest goal. The full circle. Well, this is not exactly specific, is it? Don't tell me you can't sense it. You're on a path that's going to change your whole life. And there's danger everywhere around you. Deadly danger. I don't need cards to know that. I felt it as soon as you stepped over the threshold. Maybe I should go now. One more card. I don't think this is a good idea. A card. Point to it. You won't even turn it over? Not even to see your own future there? Please, look at it yourself. I'm leaving. To be honest, I've got enough trouble of my own as it is, without you scaring me. Me turn it over? No, no, no. It's already been decided who will turn it over, and it's not me. The card stays where it is. I wrote Melvin the mail for help. But Ostankovich won't be overjoyed when he hears my version with monks and the stolen De La Roche. Go for a walk, look again at everything in the hermitage, talk to people to refresh your mind, and perhaps you'll discover something new. Something more conventional, so to speak. Something Ostankovich will like better than the monks. That's a good idea. I won't disturb them. They're engrossed the in discussion. Still waiting for the response of the critics. I think it was a success. Agreed. The barriers are back in their place, and a guard is there. 
So what else could it be I missed yesterday? One of the security cameras. I didn't notice the security camera yesterday. It could reveal something. How come the guards didn't prevent the death? It doesn't seem like he's terribly busy. It isn't easy to watch so many people. Why are you here if you don't know how to guard the things you're paid to? Yes. Do you need something? Those security cameras. Are they on all the time? Sure. And the recordings are stored? Of course. You never know when you might need them. The police have just taken them. I really don't know why. I see. Thanks. How come the guards didn't prevent the death? It's what they're paid for. Unfortunately, it isn't easy to watch the Excuse me, I overheard your conversation. Sir, has anyone ever told you that your behavior is exceedingly impolite? Excuse me, what can you tell me about the painting which is being restored? It seems to be your favorite. The only thing I can say is that I don't understand how it could have been damaged. Guards everywhere, and still I lose access to the exhibit I've been writing about. It's bad they stopped you from studying your favorite exhibit. The person who damaged the painting should be whipped through the streets of Petersburg. Sure, I agree with you. A lunatic. I repeat, I would like to know how it is possible that the ticket price has not been reduced. Premier Daily in Petersburg. Today's issue. Well, what's new in Petersburg besides killer monks and stolen paintings? Reading Russian is no problem for me. It says here that the local residents were disturbed by nocturnal activity of the police force at the Hermitage. Colonel Ostankovich, in charge of security at the Hermitage, told the journalist that there was no cause for alarm, stating that all that took place was a routine training exercise. According to the paper, next month the president is going to award Ostankovich a medal for his services for improving security at the Hermitage. The high unemployment rate threatens work on the restoration of the woods near Lake Baikal. The region is in serious ecological crisis. According to our information, the driver isn't sure how the collision happened. The truck driver is still in shock from having a passenger car end up under his wheels. <laughs> Professor Komprenko sounds a warning that there is a direct relationship between global warming and the growing number of seismic shocks. Remember the tidal wave in Asia? It was caused by an earthquake of 8.9 degrees on the Richter scale. And the professor predicts more such catastrophes to come. Why would I pull it out? Two days ago, I left a bag with several French books at the bus stop on Zagorodny Prospect. If you find it, leave a message for me on the notice board outside the library. Advert, flats for sale, bikes, books, all sorts of things. Why would I pull it out? I'll read the whole newspaper on the plane back to France. The sooner that happens, the better. The results of all the matches, half-time results, final results. <laughs> Who understands all this stuff? 
I never was into sports. Yes, your end. Do you need anything? Well, have you found out anything yet? I hear you took the camera recordings from the Hermitage. Is there something interesting on them? Unfortunately, there isn't. They were switched off during the failure. I hoped to see who damaged the painting that hides the secret passage. Curiously, we couldn't find anything. What do you mean? The recording from the time of the break-in is nowhere to be found. And nobody knows where it's gone. Overwritten. Our technical boys think it might have been a virus of some sort. Our technicians managed to capture a few images from the hard disk where data was saved before it's written onto the backup CDs. But most of it was already overwritten. Unfortunately, the images we have don't show how the painting was damaged. The guard should have been in a position to notice something, except that... During the crucial period, he left his post to answer the call of nature. He is no help to us at all. But at least it proves that the exchange of Delaroche... Yes, you are right about that too. And the damage of the painting in front of the secret door were interconnected events. Despite that, you don't want to run a more thorough analysis which would help us find out if perhaps something else disappeared the night before? I understand. You want to cover it up. Could I at least see the shots from the security camera? Maybe I can find something interesting. Sure, they're on the table over there. But as I've said, they are worthless. Photos from the security camera at the Hermitage. The painting is not damaged at this point. The guard is on duty here. There's nothing strange about that. The painting seems intact here. It's noon right now. It's normal that there are visitors in the museum. The image is bad. I can't really comment on this. There's something wrong with the time given here. The period covered seems too short. The painting seems intact here. The guard wasn't there, and now here he is. That was probably the moment when he went to the restroom. In this image, the painting is clearly damaged. The painting seems intact here. An afternoon visitor in the museum. This is going nowhere. Photos from the security camera at the Hermitage. There's noise in this image, making parts of it distorted and difficult to see. It's not bad enough that it would conceal the guard's presence, though. The painting's now damaged. That thing on the floor below would be a frame fragment. Yes, that's it. This will surely convict him. The time when the guard was away is a bit too short for him to go to the restroom and make it back. He's involved in it. Either he damaged the paintings, or he pissed into the flower pots in the gallery. Did Ostankovich really miss that? I've looked at the images, and I've found something. Really? Tell me. One shot was taken before the painting was damaged, and the other one after. A guard is in both of them. Well, that's nothing new. Just when the painting was vandalized, the guard was on the toilet. 
The culprit probably waited for him to leave, then damaged the painting. I think the guard is lying. Only seconds pass between the first and the second shot where the painting is already damaged. The guard is in both of them. What's the probability that he went to the restroom and came back in seconds? Damn it. You're right, Gerand. How come nobody else noticed that? That guard could really help us move this case forward. I must admit that you surprised me. A lot. Go to the Hermitage now and try to get something out of that guard. You'll recognize him from the photographs we have from the recording. I want to know how he's involved. Damn it, I've gone through all the rooms and the guards nowhere to be found. Ostankovich should know about it. Colonel, the guard from the Hermitage has disappeared. Vanished into thin air. What do you think of Katerine's idea? The new installation? Yes. Do you want to talk it over? A new guard's here. I suppose life goes on at the Hermitage. Good morning, sir. Do you need something? I see the Hall of Peter the Great is closed because of damage to an exhibit. Is the management giving you a hard time? Of course. The head of security is seeing red, but worse things happen. He'll cool down in a couple of days. But Fedorov probably will pay for it. He was on duty at the time. Poor man. His little daughter is ill, and now on top of that he must deal with work trouble. That must be unpleasant. Good morning, sir. Do you need something? I see the Hall of Peter the Great is... Of course. That must... Good morning, sir. Good morning. Your colleague, the one who was here before you. Yes, Ilya Fedorov. He isn't here, I'm afraid. But he might be back soon. Why? What happened? He had to leave. Said a doctor phoned him. Probably something to do with his daughter. Poor man. With his daughter? He's got a little girl. She's really sick, poor child. He thought it better to move her to his mother's, so the girl would have someone with her all the time. And where does she live? Old Mrs. Fedorov? On the Makarov embankment. There's a disco or something near there. You can't miss it. <laughs> she complains about the noise constantly. But tell me, who are you? Why are you asking? I'm just an acquaintance. Goodbye. Young man, would you mind fetching my cup of coffee? It'll be on the kitchen worktop. It's nice to have a guest here. Laura doesn't visit me very often. She's probably very busy in France. I've got mail. When I've got a minute, I should read it. 
Good thing that Lara's aunt still has an old PC. This will definitely be interesting for Lara. I should write to her at once. Stankovic. What does he want this time? The guard. We have him here, locked up like he should be. Have you got any more news? Come to my office. Right now, we can discuss it here. Here you are. Good. I had the guard brought in, but there's a problem. I can't interrogate him. You can't have him interrogated? Why not? Isn't it obvious? Nobody in the department can find out about this. It would cause a scandal in the press if anything leaked. I can't just start asking the guard if he stole something, or why he damaged the painting, or who switched off the security device, or... So I just have to accept your theory, then. That some damn monk stole valuable paintings from the museum right under our noses. So just interrogate him yourself, then. Do it alone. Nobody else needs to listen. There are certain rules here in Russia. The most important being that all the interrogations must be recorded. If I was the sole interrogator and did not record it, questions would be asked. Before long, someone higher up would start poking their nose into the matter. Or the press. No, I can't do it. But there is one way around it. What would that be? And why do I feel certain that I won't like the answer? And that it will have something to do with me? Whatever passes between a legal representative and a suspect is privileged information and can't be recorded. Tell him you are his court-appointed attorney, and find out what he knows. So I pretend to be his appointed attorney. Nobody records the conversation, and nobody except me and you ever learns what he said. Sometimes your powers of comprehension astonish me. Congratulations on your new job, attorney. Okay. Do I get a diploma? Very funny. From now on, you'll have access to the guard any time you want. I'll see to it. I don't care how you do it, but make him spill the beans. And since I don't trust you that much, I'll listen in to what you say in there. No technicians, no recordings, no stenographers. But remember, 
I'll be on the other side of the door. And I'll be all ears. I've got mail. When I've got a minute, I should read it. Good thing that Lara's aunt still has an old PC. The guard from the Hermitage. The only link to what really happened there. Good morning. I am your attorney. You? You're the man who asked about the security cameras at the museum. Don't try to fool me. Let's not beat about the bush here. I claim to be your lawyer so that this conversation doesn't have to be recorded. I need to know about that damaged painting and what exactly happened the night after. If you tell me what I need, I'll do everything I can to get you released. I know nothing about it. I just went to the restroom and someone vandalized the painting while I was there. We have evidence that you ruined it yourself. Wh what evidence is that? The camera recordings? Can you see anyone destroying the painting in them? Did you see me doing it? No. Then you can hardly blame me for anything, can you? Leave me alone. I want a lawyer. A real one. I've got to get back to my daughter. Just another lost soul. It's sad what alcohol does to some people. Listen, I'd just like to ask... Where did we get ourselves? That's my question. Oh, they've got expensive cars and clothes. But people... People should be important to them. That civilization. The modern age. I'm not quite sure I know what you're talking about. I am saying that we no longer listen to each other. I know all the people around here. I know what they like, what dreams they have, yes, their troubles. And that's because I am interested. I am not robot in designer clothes. Well, I'd better go now. Grigor, policeman from house over there, abandoned by his wife. Bartender from club. Uh, she's rough, but she has her troubles, too. The girl... Being ill from the third floor would love to have a pet. And do you think they will buy it for her? Semyona from the ground floor. He hasn't received his paycheck for three months. I know everything. That's because I'm interested in people. <laughs> Perhaps I don't wear expensive clothes, but I like people. That's really, really good of you. I'm sure we'll chat again later. Fire hydrant. I wouldn't bet on it working, though. I think there's some thinner there. Fedorov. It's the right place. Hello? Dad is at the museum and Granny has gone shopping. It's boring being home all alone, not even having a pet to play with. Hi. I'm Max. What's your name? Tanya. But I mustn't speak with strangers. I'd just like to talk about your daddy. Tanya? Are you there?
Interesting graffiti. This kind of thing does fascinate me. If it's not sprayed on a house that's 300 years old, of course. Graffiti. Someone tried really hard to let everyone know who the boss is here. Just get out of here, we're closed. I see quite a lot of people are here, after closing time. Look, I haven't had a break for 20 hours, so leave me alone, will you? Without Victor, this shift is a real pisser. Victor would have thrown those pricks out long ago. Didn't you hear? Go home, we're closed. Come on, Nada, give me another vodka. Don't spoil the fun, huh? Just kiss my ass and get out. <laughs> you still here? Great. The place full of idiots, and now we have a deaf one as well. Hey, what's with the attitude? What if I helped you? I don't want to belittle your masculinity, but take a look around. You better go before you get hurt. I'll sort it out here myself. I didn't mean violence. Persuasion is more my line. I don't know where you come from, but this is Russia. So just go away. Victor will be here in a minute, and he'll handle these clowns. What do you want? Do you know who I am? Did you see the graffiti outside? It means this is my turf. Get it? It's mine. And where the hell's the beer? And who's going to pay? Pay and you'll get it. Horrible business. And why are you staring like that? Why don't you give me a smoke? I don't have any cigarettes, but I wanted to ask... What about if I give you a proper kicking? No, I was just interested in the graffiti outside. So what? It's my masterpiece. Do you get it? An ignoramus like you could never understand. You'd better just go away. I won't talk art with someone who does not understand one bit. That's exactly right. I'd like to teach that idiot inside a lesson, but the spray has dried up and is almost impossible to use. See? The thinner dissolved the paint blocking the nozzle. I think the spray can should work now. Good. Now my tag is on top. Maxus Eras Hic Fuit. I was here, Max. Someone will be very annoyed now. Why are you staring like that? Did you get the smokes? I don't have any cigarettes, kid. But that graffiti outside, that's your work, isn't it? What about it? Don't like it? I don't give a damn. It's real art and the likes of you just don't get it. It's just that someone sprayed over it. People just won't leave anything alone these days. What? Which bastard? He'll pay dearly for that. Hey, where do you think you're going? Who's going to pay your bill? Great. Well, at least he's gone for now.
A transport box with a pet inside. Looks like an iguana. Look, I'm taking away the club pet. Yeah, give him a kiss from me. I'll really miss him. Luckily, the sprayer is gone. I don't know how I would explain taking his mascot away from the club. Tanya, I've got a present for you here. A pet. Wow, a lizard. What's its name? Can I keep it? Sure you can keep it. And you can give it any name you want to. Daddy told me not to speak with strangers. They might take me on another trip. And that would make Daddy sad. But now that I know your name, you can't be a stranger, can you? I know your Daddy. What about your trip? Can you tell me about it? Two men took me on a trip right after school. I spent two days on a farm. We went to the forest, fed the animals. And it was really good fun. Only, I couldn't call Daddy because it was a secret trip. And if I called him, I would spoil the whole thing. But when they brought me back, Daddy was kind of sad. And he told me I had to be careful because they could have hurt me. But they were nice. And I don't think they would hurt anybody because they were so nice. I see. Well, Daddy's right. You shouldn't go anywhere with strangers. Anyway, I'm off now. Will you see Daddy? Of course I'll talk to him. Wait a minute, then tell him to come soon. And give him Katya, so he won't feel sad. Sure, I'll give her to him, along with the message. The doll for the guard from his daughter. Your daughter sent you this. You... you monster! Don't touch her! Leave her alone! She's got nothing to do with it! Do you understand? Calm down. I don't want to hurt her. She's ill. She's very ill. She needs peace and quiet. I've talked to her. They kidnapped her and blackmailed you, right? They got her outside the school and took her out of the city. I was afraid I wouldn't see her again. You don't know what it's like. What did they want from you? They wanted me to damage that painting. They told me how to do it. They said no one would ever know if I did exactly what they told me. Once the transfer was complete, I took the CD and threw it away. The original recording was being overwritten at that moment, so it was useless. I, I told myself it was only a small price to pay to have Tanya back at home, alive and unharmed. But that's not all of it, is it? No. I called them right back, but they told me it wasn't over yet. They hid a small disc in the restroom for me to pick up. You know, the sort of disc you can use to store music and programs on. I put it in one of those big computers in the server room and ran a program that was on it. I have no idea what it did. 
looked like nothing, to tell the truth. I don't really understand it, but I think it contained a virus, and it turned off the security devices at a certain time. But I didn't want to hurt anyone. I just wanted them to give Tanya back to me. She's ill, she needs the rest. Please look after her. You found her so they can find her too. Don't worry. I believe they won't come back for your daughter. They got from you what they wanted. Your daughter is safe, trust me. I need to know some details so that we can catch these guys. Have you ever seen them with your own eyes? Only one of them. When he brought Tanya back, he warned me not to talk to anyone about this stuff. What did he look like? Uh, it was strange. He, he wore robes, like some sort of monk, and he had a tattoo on his neck. A tattooed monk? You really expect me to believe that? It sounds strange, I know, but it's the truth. Look, I won't lie to you. Things don't look good for you. If you want my help, give me more information. Something that I can use. Uh, the next morning, the older one called me. They couldn't get everything they wanted done in the Hermitage. Someone was going to have to come back and finish the job. He wanted my help again. But Ostankovich threw everyone out of the Hermitage that second night. Yes, I, uh, I told myself that was a good thing. There was no need for me to help them. That their man would be undisturbed. With no one there, he could do what he needed and would all be happy. Well, finally something useful. A notebook. It belongs to Lara or her aunt. I have a pencil and paper. Could you draw the tattoo? And, uh, let, let me have a go. It looked like this, roughly. Strange. It looks like some kind of writing. Something ancient, probably from the Near East. I don't understand it. I must call Lara to see if she can help me with it. Lara isn't answering her phone. Just when I need to talk to her. Damn it. I hope she at least reads her emails. Sorry, Max. I don't have computer access at the moment. I've just got an email notification. Do you need something important? Could you please help me with a problem I have here? I've got an interesting clue, but I don't know who to turn to. A clue? What clue? I need to find out the meaning of certain symbols. Quite peculiar symbols. You're in luck. Not far from Moscow Station, there's a private library. It's right on Zagorogny Prospect. Try talking to the librarian. You shouldn't have a problem if you tell him I sent you. Great. I knew you'd come up with something. I'm sorry, my taxi's here. Got to go. Bye for now. That's done. How about a short walk? Great. It's time you showed me where to get genuine Russian vodka. Andre, we've just sent that poor man to prison. We broke up a little girl's family. How can you think about booze at a time like this? All the more reason to think about it. Well, I don't plan on a drinking spree. We're going to a library. 
I suppose it beats sitting on my ass at Auntie's place watching Russian television. But we must go out in the evening, promise me that. All right, if that's what it takes. Great. Let's get this library business over with. Who's your favorite Russian author, Dostoevsky or Tolstoy? Or do you prefer Gorky? Andre, shut up. What's it like to turn your back on all responsibility, on everybody else, and just look out for number one? Just be careful not to end up like your victims. Remember, you are just one short step away from being behind bars yourself. She is undoubtedly waiting for a bus. Judging by her clothes and the designer bag, she's not among St. Petersburg's poorest inhabitants. It's quite impossible to make a phone call from here. Closed. Go away. This isn't a public library. Max, are you sure this is the right place? This is the address Lara gave me. Hmm. I don't like this place at all. We should get out of here. Can't you feel it? This isn't a library. It's a mausoleum. Stop trying to scare me, please. You're beginning to sound like Lara's aunt, and it's obvious you have never been to a really old library if you think that way. Hello? Can you hear me? Go away, please. <coughs> I'm going to call the police. I'm sorry to disturb you. I just need to speak to you. Do what you want. If you need me, I'll be in the lounge. It's not so musty back there. How can anybody work here? You don't know too many librarians, do you, Andre? They love places like this. You do know this isn't a public library. My name's Durand, and uh, the guy admiring your collection is my brother. Lara Svedlova recommended you. Smart girl, Lara, she'll go far. Since she sent you, you're welcome. What can I do for you? My request may sound somewhat strange. Then you've come to the right place. This is a somewhat strange library. What kind of people would have the two symbols drawn here, tattooed on their necks? And why? Let me see them. Here they are. Hmm, they're Mem and Vav. Two Aramaic, or if you prefer, Proto-Hebrew signs. So they're from the Hebrew alphabet? Not exactly, my friend. There are corresponding signs in modern Hebrew, but you would only find these particular ones in documents hundreds of years old. Is there a significance to them? Hard to say. Mem Vav is a root or a part of a great number of words. You say that someone had them tattooed on their neck? I'll have to find more information. Mm, and I've an idea where to start. But I'll need your help. Sure. What should I do? A thin book came in just last week, and I think it could have something about this in it. Mm, but what was its title? It came among the last books. Uh, oh, I dare say last week, but <laughs> I don't remember its name. Oh, that head of mine. I remember wondering how misleading its title was, seeing such symbols connected to Northern Europe. Uh, you should have a look in the book catalogue in the study. How can I help you with it? The new books are on the top shelf in the next room. I need you to find it and fetch it. I prefer not to climb so high anymore. Vertigo, you know. Sure, I'll try.
Would you believe it? These books are priceless. What do you mean? Are you blind? Do you see those two blue volumes over there? Wait. That's Kipling. Turn of the last century. An expensive item. It's worth five, maybe six thousand dollars. I think I'll take a look around. Not right now. Well, have you found anything? Maybe we got lucky. The custodian of the collection might be able to help us. But first, I must bring one book to him. If you can dream and not make dreams your master, if you can think and not make thoughts your aim, if you can meet with triumph and disaster, Every real library has to have a proper ladder. Ideally, it also has such a system of storing books that doesn't make you climb the ladder all the time. Look, we seized the boat, got into the bathroom, cleaned out the orange peel and cigar ends at the bottom of the bath. He must have been dragging the catalog seems, well, impractical. A pivotal historical this? work it's on a distinguished orientalist. Catalogue number C4423157. A courageous attempt from the 19th century to build bridges between science and faith. Catalogue number C4423159. Hyman Hurwitz, The Etymology and Syntax in Continuation of the Elements of the Hebrew Language. A work on Hebrew syntax and etymology. Catalog number C4423162. A discourse of the Bishop of Ely. Catalog number C4423163. Science and Faith, Pantheism, Atheism, Rationality. Catalog number C4423168. A critique of church conditions from the first half of the 16th century. Catalog number C4423170. A tract dealing with water baptism ritual. Catalog number C4423209. Unitarian document compiled by a Bostonian pastor. Catalog number C4423210. A historical treatise on various sects and occult fraternities in Scandinavian countries. Catalog number C4423210. Psychoanalysis, Interpretation of Dreams, Catalog Number C4423212. The most recently added book. However, Freud didn't write about Hebrew signs. A historical treatise on various sects and occult fraternities in Scandinavian countries. Catalog Number C4423211. The middle part of the bookcase. The ordering is kind of strange. This book doesn't match what the librarian told me. It won't be the right book. I'd better give this one a good once over. Taking a pile of books isn't the right idea. It's enough to take just one, especially if it's the right one. Perhaps this is the book. Hyman Hurwitz, The Etymology and Syntax in Continuation of the Elements of the Hebrew Language, a work on Hebrew syntax and etymology, catalog number C4423162. Hyman Hurwitz. I'd better give this one a good once over. Perhaps this is the book. Balfour Stewart, The Unseen Universe, or Physical Speculations on a Future State, catalog number C4423159. Perhaps this is the book. Perhaps this is the book. Bertold Pustinger, Onus Ecclesiae, 
Catalog number C4423170. If I were you, I wouldn't do it. Max, you should be more careful. Do you know how dangerous a fall from such a height could be? Why don't you secure the ladder? Is it this one? Could well be. Perhaps this. Sermonia Williams, Histoire Orientale, catalog number C4423157. Perhaps this is the book. Perhaps this is the book. John Christopher Stewart, Societe Scania. The catalog number is C4423211. That looks promising. I won't disturb the librarian with every book that I get into my hands. I should first... Yes, this is definitely the book the librarian talked about. I should hand it over to him. I don't think so. My hair could turn gray in the process. Please look at it carefully. This must be it. The Hebrew doesn't quite fit the Scandinavian countries, but it's thin, and it's one of the last ones recorded in the catalog. Ah, uh, show me. You're probably right. Do not let yourself be fooled, my friend. Answers are sometimes hidden in unexpected places. I'll need some time now, and quiet, above all. I'm sorry, I have an urgent phone call. Yes? Trust me. You receive a truly divine gift from Max Lara. Pandora's box is locked now, and you can't find the key. But that will soon change. What will you do with the key when that happens? Will you throw it away? Cursed Pandora. I've searched the whole database, but I have no results. Maybe I can find something useful in my history books at home. Afterwards, I should relax a bit in the museum garden and get some fresh air to get my thoughts together.
Maybe I'm uncool, but I just ignore what passes for fashion these days. A book called The Tales and Myths of Antiquity. Greek gods, heroes, monsters. I loved this, even when I was a little girl. Pandora's Box by the Greek poet Hesiodus. The box was originally created by Hephaestus. Pandora got it as a gift from Dios, but in reality, it was a tool of revenge on humans. Once Pandora opened the box, despite numerous warnings from her brother Epimethos and from Prometheus, poverty, sickness, sorrow, crime and other bad things were unleashed upon the world. The only thing that stayed in the box was hope. Interesting. Pandora's box. Considered Hephaestus' work. And the man I'm looking for is somehow linked to this object, to this box. That could be a lead. I'm sorry. I apologize for that. Never mind, my dear. They'll come back. This is their home now, and everyone comes home sooner or later. And what about you? Are you far from home? Why don't you sit down for a while? My accent? You can tell, can't you? Yes, I am far from home. Very far. See? They aren't afraid of you anymore. They know you're with me. Where are you from, then? I grew up in Petersburg, Russia, and ended up here. At the Interpol headquarters. Ah, uh, so you are a policewoman, or perhaps a detective. That must be hard work for a young girl far from home. You think I'm alone? Why? I'm not. Yes, girl, you are. If you weren't... Why would you be wandering through this park and wasting time chatting with an old man? You look tired. Is something worrying you? Does it show so much? It's not easy to hide your real feelings. You're probably right. Yes, I'm trying to find someone, but I'm really just running around in circles. And why are you looking for him, if I may ask? If I don't find him, my friend could be in real trouble. I'm looking for someone who identifies himself with the symbol of Pandora's box. Would that help your friend? How symbolic. Do you know all that was left in it after the woes of the world had been unleashed? One thing. Hope. It is interesting, but it won't help me much. Do you have any more advice? Don't lose hope. Hephaestus forged Pandora's box for the gods, and he also had hope. He hoped to be received amongst the gods, despite his physical disability. He was disabled. I didn't know that. That could help me. See? Hope dies last. Thank you so much. So Hephaestus made Pandora's box, despite his disability. He tried to please gods by this perfect peace, but they would still look down on him. I see it now. Hephaestus wasn't an ordinary blacksmith. He was an artist. That's why I didn't find his name in the database. He's someone who hasn't been hired to examine works of art before. I must do a database search among artists who have a physical disability. See, Lara. In the end, you have discovered the secret of Pandora's box. What price are you willing to pay to look inside?
If my sixth sense is right, I must find Pandora now. See? The Hephaestus codename is no longer that mysterious, just like Pandora's box. Ostankovich will undoubtedly be interested in this. I found a forger in Portugal. His name is Diaz. If someone tries to sell the paintings, it's very likely that the buyer will contact him to have their authenticity certified. Diaz? I've never heard of him, but any lead is good. Put a squeeze on him, find him, and get some information out of him. And leave your badge at home, will you? What? I am to pack my things and go to Lisbon? Unofficially? And how should I squeeze him? You know his type, he won't tell me anything. And having or not having a badge won't change it. Going there would be useless. You know full well this isn't the way to do things. Listen to me closely now, Svetlova. When I want to know how Interpol conducts an investigation, I'll ask you. But we're doing it my way this time. And before you start protesting again, ask yourself whether you want to help your friend Max or not. And just between the two of us, I can help your career, too. I didn't become a policewoman to... Enough. I've just offered to help your career. But if this conversation goes on further, I might change my mind, and then we can discuss how much it would harm you to refuse. And if I find out, that will be the end of it, okay? You'll leave Max alone, I'll go back, and we'll forget it. Of course. If your man leads us to the painting, I'll take care of the rest. Good. I'll take some time off and I'll get back to you once I know something. Good. Don't disappoint me. Can you hear? Can you hear the sad music play? The sad music that accompanies stories without happy endings. Stories like yours. Welcome to Lisbon, Lara. Welcome to the city of Seven Hills. Rua das Flores. According to the Interpol database, Diaz, alias Hephaestus, lives here. Unfortunately, it's not mentioned in what flat exactly, I'll have to figure it out by myself. I wonder what his face will look like when I have to hit him hard to get the information I need out of him. It won't be a pleasant encounter, I think. A maniac. The sort that waves signs and shouts at people in the street. Hi. I'm interested in the guy called Diaz. Do you know him? Eles... Eles mesmo vêm. Nós, nós temos de ter cuidado porque senão... Vem, tu tens que vir comigo porque senão... Eles vêm, eles estão, estão, eles estão cá, eles quase estão cá. This won't be an easy conversation. Diaz. Aurelio Diaz. Eles estão quase cá. É bem, eles estão quase cá. No, this isn't the way. I can speak Russian, English and French. I've never had the time to learn Portuguese.
Nothing. I should try the neighbors. Diaz's letterbox is here, flat number six. There is a letter inside. I must get it. Maybe there's something interesting in it. Breaking in the house in clear daylight is something that I'd really rather avoid. In this heat, doing such work, it must be difficult to survive without a crate of beer. The hot sun works wonders. He sleeps like a baby. Hey, senor! Pause, porra. Incredible! He fell asleep again! If I turned it up a little bit, maybe I could wake that sleeping workman. I wouldn't put money on it, but perhaps he could help me. The radio is off now. The volume is turned up to maximum, but it doesn't help much. I can hear some music, but there's just too much interference. Seems like I caught something. Well, I guess he won't need this anymore. Good morning. Ah, que surpresa. Falas português. Podes então explicar-me por que me acordaste. O que queres? I didn't catch one word of what he said. It's useless. We don't understand each other. At least I can imagine he's annoyed his jackhammer is not working. Ai, ó oh, rapariga, tudo rabo de cavalo. Já que andas aí de um lado para o outro, podias ligar o jurador. O jurador é coisa grande de metal. I think he wants me to start it up somehow. I don't know if he should be in charge of a jackhammer in his condition. Oh well, if I don't get it working, someone else will. It's on! No, please. The starter got knocked out again. I must fasten it somehow after switching it on. Is this a construction site or an illusion? The workers sleeping, the machines don't work. How is it possible that there actually are some houses? The only thing that's left in the shed is a pair of tongs for handling metal. At least it's something. A tool shed without tools. I wonder how many years it will take before this ruin becomes a new building. This phone number could be useful. What a pity I'll forget it soon. Got it. Saved in my cell phone now. Perhaps I could buy something sweet. To help me calm down. Damn, I feel I am addicted to sweets. Maybe there's some chocolate in it. Or some lollipops. I love lollipops since being a little child. I spent my last cash for a taxi. Without some cash, I won't get anything out of it.
Now what can I buy? Various Portuguese newspapers, covered by a sheet of plastic. It doesn't seem anybody's there. Yeah, definitely closed. I could buy a little something. 222 two, two, almonds. I don't like nuts too much. One for one chewing gum. I don't feel like that at the moment. One for three a chocolate bar. Mm, looks good. Maybe there's something more delicious. One three five a lollipop. <laughs> I love lollipops. As children, we ate them and then took the stick and stuck it into old Tereskova's doorbell. <laughs> Children's mischief. One, three, four, ordinary sweets. Boring. Two, nine, one, a nut bar with chocolate. Hmm, don't like nuts. One, three, eight, some kind of gingerbread bar. Hmm, <laughs> wouldn't like the weird taste for sure. The lollipop is a great idea, but this machine is becoming annoying. Oh, rapariga, qual é o problema? Carrega no botão. É só carregar no botão. Just give me a second, you bad-tempered. A raspberry lollipop on a long stick. This could work. Lollipops are not only tasty, they are also useful. The lever moved. It may not be state of the art, but at least it should work. Now a moment of suspense. I see. This isn't the way. Here we go. Pelo amor do senhor, o que fazes? És tu linha. Não vês que não funciona. There's pressure, but something's wrong. I see it now. He didn't connect the jackhammer to the right outlet. Está a funcionar. Obrigado. Good. Let's hope he can start work now. It will be a novel experience for him. Look at this. When he puts in some effort, he can do the job quite nicely. O que estás a dizer? Look at this. When he puts in some effort... An old radio run by batteries. You turn it on with the same knob that controls the volume. And it usually doesn't tune into anything. It's a little bit stuck. Perhaps I should loosen the battery somehow. It was stiff, but the batteries are out. Maybe if I give you something to help your memory, you can help me. O quê? Atira as moedas, como se eu fosse um real expediente. Vais para o inferno. Não vais escapar deste planeta. 
vais apodrecer com os outros ignorantes. The small amount I offered must have offended him. He left. It's Portuguese. I don't understand one word. I need somebody to help me out here. Oh, oh, bella Donna Lara. What can an aged detective from the third department do for you? Or do you finally want to confess your undying love for me? Better late than never. Unfortunately, not this time, Diego. I'll leave that for a more festive moment. Right now, I just need your help. Hola, mi niña. What do you need? Do you speak Portuguese by any chance? It's almost like Spanish, right? I need to get inside a house, and I don't know how to ask them to open the door. <laughs> what sort of rogue makes such a beautiful lady wait in front of his house? But if this guy is really worth it, and I have to say, that thought really breaks my heart. Try saying, abra porta, por favor. Thanks, Diego. I owe you a cup of coffee. Coffee? Oh. Well, it's better than nothing, I suppose. Abra a porta, por favor. Não percebi. Não pode repetir. Quem é? Well, now I can just feel sorry that Diego is in Leon and not here at the moment. That shouldn't be such a big problem. I can call him again if he can help me here. See, let's go through it again. It is. Abra porta, por favor. Do you think you could arrange things? What do you mean? Can you do the talking? I really need to get inside. Well, uh, I don't really have a choice. Outra vez! Satanas dos putos! Quem está aí? Desculpa, minha senhora. Não se importa de abrir a porta, por favor. Que esta menina não fala português. E tem a filhota no prédio. Com a sua vizinha, que não abre a porta. Ai, coitadinha, deve ser a portalhona do segundo esquerdo, de certeza. Entre, menina, e vá buscar a sua filhinha, coitadinha. The door opened. Thanks a lot. You are wonderful. No problem. Don't forget about the coffee. Broken ventilation. That won't help much in this musty corridor. Flat number five. Excuse me, I'd like to ask... Ai, que chatice! Deixam-me em paz! Vão-se embora! Então eu estou a dormir e não veem isso! Ai, estes achos é tudo dois! Não, não de novo. É o lugar errado e a mulher está enganada o suficiente. Flat número 6. Flat número 6. 
According to the names on the letterboxes, this should be Diaz's flat. Either he's not at home or he doesn't welcome visitors. Maybe the door is not locked. The guy whose compressor I fixed is working down there. I'm not sure I made him happy. There's no point, I can't move the window. Extintor de fogo. Hmm. An ordinary fire extinguisher, likely to be used to extinguish a fire. During the last training session, a colleague used one to smash open the window of his car to get his keys out. Quite an interesting way to use it. I have to do much more important things like finding out in which flat Diaz is living instead of dragging around such a heavy thing and risk smashing the floor or the walls. Locked, of course. Looks like I have to break in. It's Diaz's flat. I have to get in there. The strap that holds the fire extinguisher is rusty. I can't take it out with my hands. I need something to cut through the strap. This will surely help. Here we are. I don't think this will help me. With the jackhammer making so much noise outside, nobody will hear a few blows on the door. Dank smell and a lot of mess. Hmm, no trace of Diaz. Good. I can take a close look around and hopefully find some evidence. I should definitely find something here to fish out the letter from the letterbox. There must be something somewhere in here. A clue. A hint of where he's gone. Something. I can't return empty-handed now. This really is a perfect moment for a call from Philip. Yes, Philip? Such enthusiasm. Perhaps you should be happy when I call you, since you can't be bothered to call me yourself. No, oh, my Philip. How many times do I have to say it? We split almost three weeks ago and you call just about every day. It's over. O-B-E-R. Leave me alone. You can't be serious. Of course I'm serious. What did you think all those weeks? That I was kidding? A few small quarrels don't automatically justify a split, do they? Small quarrels? Don't say that. You know how much I care about you. If you keep ignoring me, I'll do something to myself. Okay, listen. I really don't have time to deal with this now. I'm not in France. When I get back, I'll call and we'll discuss it one last time. Fine. I'll talk to you later. The rubbish bin is empty. From the look of this place, he never understood what it was for anyway. A curtain instead of a door. A luxurious solution in a luxurious flat.
always the same girl on the posters, called Liv. To some extent, this male obsession is a mystery to me. This goes beyond measure, though. Far beyond it. No way. I'm not taking a poster with a half-naked woman out of a disgusting toilet. Always the same... Thank God he's evolved to the I-can-flush-the-toilet level. It's a pity he didn't make it to... I know where to put the trash. A knife, a dirty fork, a piece of tomato. That's it? This man was a master forger? I'm beginning to think that I made a mistake. A pile of filthy dishes. <laughs> How artistic. Looking under the carpet seldom lets you down. I bet that if I searched all four corners, I'd find something interesting. Take the carpet. From this flat. No way. There. Maybe you aren't so clever after all, Diaz. No dishes, as you'd expect, which is hardly surprising. They say, tell me what you read and I'll tell you who you are. Who are you, Diaz? A stamp album? I thought that stamp collectors were supposed to be tidy folk. Diaz is obviously an exception, an extraordinarily large one. I'm not really an expert on stamps, but maybe I could find something here. More stamps and some tweezers. There are no more pages in the album. Diaz doesn't have many stamps. Ha! Ah, the tweezers could be helpful. Good to grab things when your fingers are too clumsy. Ah, Rosenwald. It doesn't surprise me to see it at a forger's place. But why does Diaz write numbers on these books? On this one he's put the number three. Their Mind's Eye by Christoph Myers. I don't know this one. Diaz has added the number one. Author Candy Bushcraft. Didn't she write some US TV series? That's a strange read for someone like Diaz. Number two is written on the spine. The tables overflowing with used dishes from unfinished meals. Together with newspapers and magazines, it makes an ideal working space. <laughs> For a pig. Am I to take this with me? This? Live Santi on all of the posters here. <laughs> Sick. On all posters, live is written in capitals. Strange. A desk drawer. The first place to look for important documents. I feel I could find something here. The note with the Roman numbers is surprising. What are those needed for? Who needs to calculate or write in Roman numbers? This chart must be important to Diaz, but I won't take it with me. I know these conversions by heart. Sunglasses. Nothing more, nothing less. It looks like Diaz has big trouble with his health. I can't bring myself to feel sorry for him. Finally, the first indication that Diaz has some interest in art. I think I'd prefer not to see his work, though. A calculator, about a hundred years old. All you have here is a piece of paper with a conversion table for Roman to Arabic numerals. What do you need the calculator for, I wonder?
It looks like a calculator, but it's much heavier and somehow strange. A weird toy. It certainly is somehow connected to the Roman numbers note. I can push the buttons, but they don't do anything. What a weird calculator. I can... I can push... The click came from behind the bookcase. Think, Lara. The calculator controls it somehow. But how? What to price? Somewhere around here there must be a clue. Maybe if I got pumped up by steroids I could move the cupboard. Well, I'm sure somebody moved it before, because there are ruts on the floor caused by something heavy being moved. There are deep ruts on the floor. They say, tell me what you read and I'll tell you who you are. Who are you, Diaz? Fifty ways to cause back pain. Hmm. And the number seven added on the book spine. Their Mind's Eye, by Christoph Myers. I don't know this one. Diaz has added the number one. Ah, Rosenwald. It doesn't surprise me to see it at a forger's place. But why does Diaz write numbers on these books? On this one he's put the number three. José de Mareas Rego. Forty años de arte. Who knows what that means? Anyway, six is written on the spine. I can't fish it out with my fingers. Ordinary tweezers. Tweezers might do the job. Well, Diaz, let's find out who's been writing to you. A letter for Diaz. I wonder who it's from. Rua das Flores, Lisboa, Portugal. Wad Films, 312 Lexham Road, Wichita, TX, USA. A letter from Wad Films to Diaz. A letter from Wad Films to Diaz. Letter. Dear Mr. Diaz, for the last time we never give out contact information for our actresses. While we understand that you are a devoted fan of Miss Liv Santi, we cannot grant your request, no matter how much money you offer. Moreover, should you continue in your efforts to contact Miss Santi, we will be forced to undertake legal action to restrain you. We hope you will understand the situation and remain a satisfied viewer of our films. Yours faithfully, Bobby T. Jefferson, Wad Films President. Oh my god, Diaz is absolutely obsessed by this actress, Liv. The guy is out of his mind. It looks like a calculator, but it's much heavier and somehow strange. A weird toy. It certainly is somehow connected to the Roman numbers note.
The click came from behind. I've got you, Diaz. Your ass is mine. Semi-closed library. There's a piece of paper and a 9mm gun magazine. A 9mm clip containing a message. What does it say, I wonder? Alfredo, I have to say that it comes as a big surprise that you got in here. Perhaps I underestimated you. Leave the paintings and get lost. And one more thing. You're the first and only stranger who's ever got in here. If you mess this place up, if you don't close the door behind you properly, if you break or take something, I'll make sure they find you floating in the sea. The same thing will happen if you touch my girl. I need to find some evidence. There'll be time to examine Diaz's equipment later. I'd better not touch it at the moment. I have more important things to do. There's something hidden behind the cupboard. It's locked, of course. Okay, I need a key. Ah, some perverse letters. Typical. And what is it here? Interesting. The bank statement tells me that Diaz bought a plane ticket to Edinburgh and a train ride to a town called Ladybank. It seems he flew out in haste. The payment went through this morning. And there is a note saying something about the authentication of a painting. My head. What happened? Somebody attacked me, and I can barely see anything. It's most likely some kind of X-ray machine. If Diaz examines paintings, that would be essential for his business. The cover is firmly screwed on. It will be hard, 
but I think I can do it. The description on the file tells me that the gas is explosive. That might be of use to open the blocked door. Who would have guessed? A 9mm gun? What are you afraid of, Diaz? A file with explosive gas mixture. We use something similar in the laboratory. It isn't wise to play with such things. This could work, but only if the gas isn't too explosive. That could have unpleasant consequences. That's not a bad idea. But who knows how explosive the gas will be. I'd better protect myself. This metal cupboard looks sturdy enough. Maybe it could shield me from a minor explosion. There's only one way to find out. Weapons are not toys. What if the gas is too explosive? This stuff looks easier in the movies. Come on. I have to pull myself together. At least I can look forward to my own small office at Interpol. All right, here I go. Damn Ostankovich. What did he drag me into? A dead man in the corridor, a demolished flat? I hope nobody notices me. It wouldn't be good if someone linked me to this disaster. I missed that. The police. I should make it to the airport as quickly as possible. The less I hang around here, the better. There are just too many people around the news agents. They could notice me. Excuse me, may I speak English? Of course. This time you closed Pandora's box in time. This time. I'm telling you, stop playing games, Lara. Next time it could end far worse. Mark my words. I'm sorry, I have an urgent phone call. Yes? Max, we've got a problem. A big problem. As if we didn't have any before. Where are you? What happened? I'm on my way home from the airport. I was in Lisbon. I went to Diaz's flat. Hold on. Are you telling me that Pandora's box is Aurelio Diaz? <laughs> that would never have occurred to me. You should have told me earlier. You shouldn't have gone there at all. I've heard he isn't quite right in the head. He wasn't there, but someone jumped me and almost killed me. Are you all right? All right. Wait, let me see. 
I broke into the flat of a horrendous pervert. Someone knocked me out and left me there to asphyxiate. Then they killed a poor guy who was just hanging around. And, oh yes, I blew up part of the house. So no, I'm not alright. Let me rephrase that. Are you injured? No, I'm not. But don't worry, I'll be alright. I just need to calm down. And did you find anything? Not really. Diaz has gone to Scotland to authenticate some extremely valuable painting, but I don't know where exactly he is. Perhaps near a town called Ladybank. Ladybank? Of course. He's gone to Tian. Who or what is Tian? He's a millionaire who deals in stolen paintings. A man who doesn't shrink from anything. I tried selling a fake to him once and had a narrow escape. Keep away from him. How many stories are written in the pages of old books? What secrets do the noble strokes of a pen conceal in rare manuscripts? It's easy to rest among their words and let the time flow by. Forget that it's time to leave. Max, the librarian collapsed. I hope you have the number of the ambulance saved in your cell phone. Call them. I'll stay with the librarian. I have to go now. But I'll say it one more time to make sure you get the message. Forget Tian. This won't work. The phone is broken. Just rubbish. Looks like there's a sticker on the wall behind it. What have we got here? Emergency numbers. Great, just what I need. I'll add the ambulance number to my cell phone at once. services how can I help you an old man collapsed here we need you to come for him at once of course I'll need your exact address we'll send someone to you immediately what now Lara will you listen to Max and let the trail leading to Scotland grow cold or will you obediently call your former boss and boast about your success in Portugal No, I can see you've already made a decision. After all, your cases never remain unsolved. I think I should get back to Ostankovic. Good news, I hope. I wouldn't say so. Somebody tried to kill me in Lisbon. And he did kill a poor confused man. And did you find anything? Are you listening to me? This isn't a joke, this is deadly serious. Let's keep it short. You don't know anything. It looks like Diaz has gone to Scotland to meet someone called Tien. Possibly Tien plans to buy one of the stolen paintings and wants Diaz to authenticate it. Great. If there really are some paintings from the Hermitage, I must know. Go there at once. How can I put this so you will understand me? I, I just don't want to get killed because of a few paintings. Is that clear enough? I understand that you are afraid, but look at it this way. If you don't go, I'll make your life really unpleasant, and I'll ruin Max's. I don't like to repeat my threats, but you're forcing me to. I understand you, Lara, but I need to find those paintings, and nothing will stop me. Do you get that? Even if I wanted to go there, I can't leave work just like that. Not for a second time. You don't have much of a choice. You'll have to get there legally without telling anyone why you're going there. You'll find a way to do it.
There is a bedroom up there. When I first saw the flat, I knew I had to have it. A flat with two levels was always a dream of mine. Good morning. Svedlova. Hello, it's Muriel. You're just back from Lisbon, aren't you? Have you heard what happened there? Actually, I was just a few streets away from the place. No kidding. Wow. You must tell me all about it at lunch. Right. And half of Interpol will know about it by this evening. You can't just keep the story to yourself, Lara. Fortunately, it's behind you now. Just be glad nothing worse happened to you there. You don't know how happy I am. I was worried about you. I know your luck. If the leaning tower of Pisa was to fall, you'd be having a picnic below it. Please, just don't go anywhere else, ever. Don't worry. I don't feel like going anywhere. And thanks for thinking about me. See you later. And don't forget, lunch! I don't know if I'll make it today. Sorry. See you later. Great. First it was Lisbon and now it's Ladybank in Scotland. How on earth am I going to get there without anybody noticing me? My career at Interpol's taking a really wonderful turn. It looks like somebody from our department is going to Glasgow. That could help. I must write an email back to Charlotte to get further information. Svetlova? It's Jennings, from Tech Support. I just wanted to make sure you got your battery. Yes, I got it. It's a pity I couldn't have got it a month ago. Yes, yes. Uh, but the main thing is that we dealt with the problem. Everything's all right. You wouldn't really make an official complaint, would you? Not this time. Ah, seems I should check my email inbox. Hmm. So Garnot is flying to Scotland. I must take advantage of that. I should call him on the office line. Lara, Sebastian, are you flying to Scotland with the statuettes? Right. But I don't have to tell you, I'm not happy about it. Renee's been out of the maternity ward for just two days, and now I have to leave for three days. What does that cow want now? So you wouldn't mind if I fly instead of you? Are you joking? If you take it, I'll name my child after you. <laughs> Great. Thanks. I hope it's not a boy.
I don't know what I would have done if Garnot had not already been scheduled to fly there. I swear I'm finished with this. Ostankovich has really gone too far this time. This last trip, and I'm done. You are right, Lara. Your last journey has just begun. Was it a good idea to not listen to Max? Will you come back with the case closed? Or will Ladybank become your grave? If the ass took off for Edinburgh to meet Tian this morning, it gives me the perfect opportunity to surprise both them and the thief as they close the deal on the stolen painting. To get inside the house unnoticed, I have to avoid being spotted by the security cameras. Why give them cause for suspicion if I can avoid it? Edward Tian inherited a huge fortune, but it looks like he spent everything on artwork instead of repairs. Now his property is going to the dogs. This broken tractor is clear evidence of that. A solid gate, also monitored by a camera. Tian sure loves his privacy. A few ordinary stones, different sizes. I could climb over the wall here. Trespass where you can be tracked by a camera? That's not exactly a clever plan, is it? It's got Edward Tian written on it. The plate looks very thin and made out of ordinary metal. Kind of cheap. Doesn't fit for such a fancy place. The plate is screwed on. I can't get it off with my bare hands. Can't see me here. No one would look any place so obvious. A damaged security camera, which has a rather bad habit of setting off the alarm, and we don't want that. Ordinary flat stone. There's no way I could move it. It's too heavy. There's no way I could move it. It's too heavy. Part of the resilient creeping plant. The window's not shut properly. Perhaps I could climb up there somehow. It isn't that high. Well, maybe I could climb up here. This isn't the way. The pipe wouldn't hold me. I've nearly ripped it out of the wall, and one bracket already fell down on the ground. Ah. 
Ah, this could be the way in. It just has an ordinary latch. Maybe I could lift it somehow. I shouldn't attract attention to myself. What if I try to free the window latch? Maybe I could get something through the gap. Tool shed door. Locked. But the lock is a joke. I just need something to tease it open. Of course I can open such an old lock without a key. But not with fingers. Surely with some lock picks. Tian must be at home. And so must his guest. Unless they left on foot. The stairs are in bad condition. The local climate doesn't do wood any good. The bracket fallen down from the pipe. Solid metal with long and thin endings. Good. It will make a nice solid mat. Now I need something to hammer the bracket. Unusual circumstances demand unusual solutions. A few primitive lockpicks. They'll definitely be useful. Let me see. This isn't subtle work. This demands a different approach. It needs brute force, with the emphasis on the brute. This one's holding. Now for the other. Stupid lock. There's not enough space for two lock picks. I can't hold them there for long. This one's holding. Now for the other. This one's holding. Now for the other. Damn stupid lock! There's not enough space for two lock picks. I can't hold them there for long. This one's holding. Now for the other. Damn stupid lock! There's not enough space for two lock picks. I can't hold them there for long.
This one's holding. Now for the other. Damn stupid lock! There's not enough space for two lockpicks. I can't hold them there for long. This one's holding. Now for the other. Done. See, it really works. It's the first time I've used it in real life, and the last time, I hope. I won't get inside through here. This room is stuffed with junk. A couple of things could prove useful, though. Ordinary screwdriver. A pen knife. Useful for lots of things. Well, it's the sort of solution a job would come up with, but the end justifies the means. A very thin metal plate from the gate to Tian's residence. It was a somewhat vandalistic act to get it off. I shouldn't attract attention to myself. What if I try to free the window latch? Maybe I could get something through the gap. And the way is open now. A shelf with cans of paint and other junk. Originally a place for storing maintenance tools by the look of it. Somehow I doubt Tian employs a janitor. In the box there's an empty bottle, paints and a cloth. That could help me get to the window. The only thing that I could use is probably this cloth.
messing with electricity distribution without a good reason seems foolish to me. A switch box. There'll be some wires inside. It's useless. It won't move one bit. And God said, let there be light. With a light, it's much easier to see the wires leading to the door. Ah, they're connected to the light. I should find the distribution box. I could do something with it. The cover is locked with a special key, and I don't have it. So once again, I have to force a locked door open. But I hope I won't find some explosives again. Hmm. The cover isn't a perfect fit. There's a gap there. Damn, someone's ringing the bell at the outside gate. Nobody inside seems to be responding. I should take this opportunity to see what's going on. A parcel. The postman must have been here. I've got the feeling something interesting could be in it. And parcels do get lost from time to time. Especially if they are left outside the gate like that. Damn it. The sender's address looks familiar. What would Theodore Morgan send to Tian? He's definitely one of the bad guys. He solves his business problems in the nastiest of ways. Last time he left behind a demolished summer house, no evidence, and... Tian, what have you got to do with Morgan? Did you get in his way? An old piece of cloth, most likely used for dusting. I should be careful and take a very close look at the envelope. Theodore Morgan is a very dangerous man. An ordinary parcel at first glance, yes, but after reading the sender's address, I've a hunch that I should be careful with it. There's an oblong object there. I can feel a small box, but it's hard to tell what it actually is. There's a small, thick object in the envelope. It's something small and hard. Perhaps a small box. It won't move from its position. The envelope flap. You usually tear it to get inside the envelope. I'm not sure I should open that. I've a bad feeling about this envelope. A 
A pen knife. Useful. For lots of things. I should be careful and take a very close look at the envelope. Theodore Morgan is a very dangerous man. I can make out the outline of an object in the envelope. It's greasy and discolored. Suspicious. It feels like plasticine. But something tells me that Tian is too old to play with plasticine. I can make out the outline of an object in the envelope. It's greasy and discolored. Suspicious. It feels like plasticine. I think I know how it's put together. This should work. I hope. Oh my god! I can breathe more easily now. The bomb has been defused. Okay, now, really carefully. I can breathe more easily now. The bomb has been defused. A very solid looking box. Too solid for the explosion to destroy it. Good, it should be harmless now, I hope. I'm not sure I want to keep playing with this object. The bomb was enough for me. This letter came with the explosive. If it survived the explosion, the person who opened the consignment would be in no state to read it. This letter came with the explosive. If it survived the explosion, the person who opened the consignment would be in no state to read it. This letter came with the explosion. A piece of solid quartz. The cover isn't a perfect fit. There's a gap there. As I expected, from time to time, a bit of brute force can't do any harm.
According to the diagram, this wire has got something to do with the steel door. This schematic seems too important to tear up. I can look at it right where it is. Turn off the current. The first rule of working with these things. Well, let's see what happens now. Turn off the current. The first rule of working with these things. I can't do much about it without the right tool. Well, let's see what happens now. Oh Lord, that must be Tian. Calm down, Lara. Keep your cool. It's not wise to tamper with evidence. I'm no pathologist, but I've seen stuff like this before. Let's have a look. No signs of rigor mortis. So death occurred within the last three hours. Grayish skin, turning slightly violet. The body temperature is consistent with recent death. How dare you come here trying to sell something that is not yours? Who do you think you are? I'd say he died half an hour to an hour ago. The cause of death Massive loss of blood through the severed throat artery. The blow is clean and straight. Either he didn't expect the attack, or it came so fast he couldn't defend himself. I really don't like this at all, but I have to find out what has happened here. Nevertheless, this is a crime scene, and I must be careful not to leave any traces. These are outputs of the security cameras, one of them is less mobile. A garage, corridor. Wait, an injured man. I have to help him. An ordinary desk. I suppose Tian has a mahogany one somewhere up there. It looks like the output of the security cameras is stored here. However, someone's taken the recordings. This won't help the police much. On the other hand, they won't see me sneaking into the house either. Let me introduce you. Ah, Maestro Diaz is examining your goods. Hmm, if everything is all right, we'll be able to close the deal. There is one very interesting email here. About someone arriving with a painting and Diaz is going to authenticate it. Hmm. Tian had no clue of the seller's real identity. It looks like he'll never find out.
The PDA is absolutely clean, without a trace of my presence. This is quite an important thing. I shouldn't hinder the investigation by removing it. An ordinary desk. I suppose Tian has a mahogany one somewhere up there. Judging by the paints, this place is used for altering paintings as well as examining them. Could it be that Tian is in the forgery business as well? Oh my god, that's Diaz! Hold on, I'll get help. All our operators are busy. Please hold until we can deal with your call. Protect us in Astragas against the evil and the schemes of the devil. Be All our, our shield. Are busy. Diaz, hold until can we you can hear me? With your call. Damn it, All nobody's answering the phone. Please the prince of the heavenly we host, Satan and other wicked spirits that roam the world and ruin the souls. Diaz, listen to me. Who did this to you? Is he still here? The painting. It was as if something was looking out of it into me. There was something. I told him. The painting is cursed. Diablo. It's genuine. It is cursed. He mustn't buy it. Let the young man take it. The tattoo on the neck. The ones who came for it. It had the same tattoo. Devil's hands. How dare you come here trying to sell something that is not yours? Who do you think you are? You're a disgrace to the whole order. The abbot will finish the rest. Have mercy! I didn't see anything! Of course you saw everything. Your destiny has been chosen. Have pity on me. I didn't see anything. I won't tell anybody. I haven't seen anything. I swear. I told him to leave me, but he said... He said he was coming for me. Then I saw something. I shouldn't. Diaz! Pull yourself together. Who was it? Where is he? But I didn't see anything. I didn't see anything. I, it's the eyes. I don't have them. So he must leave me alone in the end. He must leave me alone. Oh my God, Diaz, did you blind yourself? And who are you afraid of? Shh, shh. He, he is coming. Run! That can't be true. It's all one long nightmare. I hope I didn't leave any prints behind. I wouldn't like the British police to link me with that massacre. Damn Ostankovich. Ostankovich, Tihan, is dead. So is Diaz. Moreover, he blinded himself before his death. Contact the British police and tell them everything. I'm done with it. I never want to hear about this again. There was no mention of death when you got me into this. Fine, fine. Just calm down. What happened there? Do you have the painting? That damn painting again. There were no paintings. Can't you see what's going on here? Lara, pull yourself together. You're a police officer, so act like one. Tell me what happened. Then I'll do what's necessary. The thief tried to sell the painting to Tian. Tian hired Diaz to test the authenticity. The three of them met at Tian's residence. 
Some men blasted their way in, slit Theon's throat, took the painting and dragged the thief away. The ass blinded himself, and he died after I found him. He must have suffered internal injuries during the fight. Besides Diaz, did anybody else see you? Did you leave any traces there? I don't think so, but I'm done here. I refuse to play your game anymore. You can threaten me all you want, but I quit. People are dead here, Ostankovich. What the hell do you take me for, Lara? Do you think I am going to step over dead bodies just to preserve my reputation? Go back to Leon and forget what you saw. I'll take care of the rest. And Max? Right now, he's probably running around Petersburg chasing hooded phantoms. But I'll stop his nonsense soon. He was dead before they arrived. How could it have happened? Did something disturb him? Or did you scare him somehow? Who do you think I am? Okay, I apologize. It's just too much for me. Everything I touch goes wrong somehow. Maybe you should leave. I don't like what's happening all around. It was just fate, Max. Nothing more. People die. You can't do anything about it. Accept it and forget about this. But sometimes things can be prevented. When people aren't cowards. So it comes back to that. The same old story. You could have drowned. Sometimes it works out and help comes in time, and sometimes it doesn't. Get over it! Hold on, Andre. What are you talking about? That day on the lake, I didn't wait for help. I saved you by myself. Don't get so discouraged, Max. You've been really brave. It doesn't matter that it wasn't you who pulled your brother out of the water. The important thing is that you didn't lose your head and ran to the village for help. Oh, my thoughts are a bit puzzled. I probably need a break. This damn case is to blame for all of this. Then go to Lara's aunt. You'll have a rest and you'll get the notes from the librarian later. You aren't interested in what the librarian discovered? No, I'm definitely going back. I must get some answers now. Just wait here a moment. I won't need much time. As you like. Before he died, he wrote down some notes. Now, let's see what the librarian figured out. I hope there are some answers. What could it be? A part of a word? But of which word? Now, where should I look? Perhaps Badilios. Yes, I could find something there. Memvavtav? Death? Yes! Mavit! <laughs> that could be it. No! <coughs> Capgrave! The 15th century? Where can I find some more details? Capgrave can't be the only source on this. How is it possible that no other book <laughs> mentions such a thing? Tattooed monks worshipping death and just one reference? <laughs> this is the precise list <laughs> of what any person has to avoid if they want to die <laughs> a good death. It says literally. You are only one of many. Thus, go together with thy fellow man for hope and determination, for belief and destiny, today, tomorrow, forever. Then you will find redemption. The librarian's notes. I have to look at everything very closely. I don't want to miss anything. Why would somebody have such weird tattoos on his neck? Who sneaks into a museum dressed in such bizarre clothes? 
Maybe they are just insane. They are obviously the proto-Hebrew signs Vav and Mem, but what do they mean together like this? And why would anyone have them as tattoos? It doesn't look like a fashion statement. They are obviously the proto-Hebrew signs Vav and Mem, but what do they mean together like this? And why would anyone have them as tattoos? It doesn't look like a fashion statement. What could it be? A part of a word? But which word? Where should I look? Perhaps Badios. Yes, I could find something there. Mem, Vav, Taf, Death. Yes, Mavet, that could be it. The Eternal Sleeper, Finland? In the 15th century, John Kapkrav came across a monastery called the Eternal Sleeper. It's in the modern-day Finland, northwest of a town called Savukovsky. Its abbot is said to have a similar tattoo. A really strange business. Ask him if he's going there. If so, have him bring as much material as possible. This looks really interesting. Incredible. It seems the monastery still exists. In the 15th century, John Kapkrav came across a monastery called the Eternal... Where can I find some details? Kapkrav can't be the only source. How is it possible that no other book mentions such a thing? Tattooed monks worshipping death and just one reference to them? It seems unlikely. I found something, but it is strange. It seems they really worship death. The tattoos indicate progression within the hierarchy of the order. For good service, the good monks gradually get three signs tattooed on their throats. They mean death. At the time of Kapgrav's visit, only the abbot had all three signs. What happens if someone else acquires all three as well? Would he replace the abbot? Their teachings, it seems, stem from a treatise called Ars Moriendi, the art of dying, which describes how to prepare for death. It seems they really worship death. At the time of ca their teaching... This is the precise list of what any person has to avoid if they want to die a good death. But on another page, there's a reference to the fifth vice. Why isn't it here? Avarice, impatience, spiritual pride, despair. There's a question mark instead of the fifth feature. Perhaps this verse could explain it. You are only one of many. Thus go together with thy fellow man for hope and determination, for belief and destiny, today, tomorrow, forever. Then you will find redemption. Avarice, impatience, spiritual pride, despair, there's a question mark instead of the fifth feature. What? Where has Andre gone? He should have waited here for me. I really hope he finally went back to France. Time to visit Ostankovich and talk to him about the unbelievable information the librarian came up with. Yes, your hand. Do you need anything? 
What have you got? It seems that the people who replaced the painting might be from a monastery in Finland. And what would Finnish monks want with stolen paintings? That's exactly what we'll find out when we get there. I want the documents that were taken from me when I was in hospital. You don't seriously think I'm going to let you have your passport so that you can disappear somewhere in Finland, do you? But we can't find out any more if I don't go. Anyway, you'd find me as soon as I entered France. You could have me picked up by Interpol. Why can't I go then? For one simple reason. You're more useful to me here. That is, if you stay on the right track and don't get diverted by fairy stories. You can't have your passport back. That's final. Just be frank with me. I've presented you with several proofs which you overlook just because you don't like what others would say. The press, the minister of internal affairs, the president. And now you want to arrest an innocent man. No. Don't drag me into such a thing. Looks like you want it that way. I will get a passport by myself. Andre, how come you're here? I thought you'd be on your way back to France. I went for a walk, and when I got back to the library, you were already gone. I thought I might find you here. What am I going to do now? I have a trace leading to a monastery in Finland. I know I will find something interesting there, but without my passport, I can do nothing about it. I'm at my wit's end. A monastery in Finland? Let me think. Yeah, I'll go there and take a look for you. You get a new passport and come after me. You should ask your friend Lara if she has an idea to get you a new passport. Are you crazy? This isn't a game. You shouldn't be here at all. Max, listen to me. I've had enough of this little brother who needs to be looked after nonsense. No more of it. You got that? If you are dumb enough to go looking for trouble deep in the forests of Finland, someone has to tell you that you are crazy. I see. But if you had your passport, you would go there and it would all be just fine? But I have to go. Don't you get it? I have to. This isn't your problem, but mine. And you must promise to me now that... I'm not listening to this. I'm going to Finland. Get in contact with Lara and get a new passport. Then come after me. Cut the crap and go back to France. Did you hear that, Andre? Damn. Max, is that you? Ah, it is you. How do you like it in Petersburg? Good morning. This is my second visit here. Both times the police have been involved. Ah, you must tell me more about it. Could it be that Laura is hiding a dangerous criminal in our place? Come, my feet are troubling me more and more. Let's sit down in the other room. I feel like I owe you an explanation. I sold paintings. Start talking. And did some forgery too. <laughs> and our little Laura caught you. She's a clever girl, there's no denying that. Something like that. And instead of being behind bars, you have to help the police now. You may think it's cruel, but I think Laura did her best for you. Very few people get a second chance. Remember that. I'm immensely grateful to Lara for that. I'm glad to hear that. You know what? Go, Lara. You should talk to her. Two are always better than one when there's trouble. And say hello to her from me. I definitely will. And if you need anything, You'll find me here. Thanks. Lara's aunt seems like a nice old lady, but she's got a strange look in her eyes, and not exactly a pleasant one.
Hi, Max. I've left for Finland. Get in your passport and join me there. I'll wait for you. And don't worry about me. I'll be fine. Andre. He can't mean that seriously. But I must get a passport as soon as possible. Lara isn't answering her phone. Just when I need to talk to her. Damn it. I hope she at least reads her emails. Do you need something? Well, not really. Thanks. I'll take a look around and come back to you later. I will never understand this constant picture taking. And <laughs> who uses Polaroids these days? Well, this definitely deserves a picture. Or ten. Do you have a minute? I expect you speak English. And I obviously shouldn't have expected that. Never mind. Good luck with taking pictures. Well, this definitely deserves a picture. And I obviously... An interesting piece. But why would anyone take pictures of it again and again? That doesn't seem quite normal to me. I shouldn't hang around here. The photographer wouldn't be too happy about it. This must be his favorite exhibit. Well, this definitely did, and I... I won't interrupt their conversation. I don't have a signal. I don't think we need to speak right now. Lara, finally. Lara! Max, I've just come back from Scotland. From Scotland? You went to Tian's place? Are you mad? Didn't I warn you? Ostankovic gave me no choice. Tian is dead, Max. Diaz was there when I arrived, but he died too. Something terrible must have happened there. And what on earth did you expect to find there? This isn't a child's game. I need to be able to reach you on the phone anytime, Lara. Waiting for you to reply to emails won't do. Two people are dead, Max. Didn't you hear me? And why do you think I warned you? You should have listened to me, Lara. Something occurred to me about St. Petersburg. Look in the newspapers. Sometimes there's this advert about foreign poetry, comic books, or things like that. That's how forgers advertise themselves from time to time. And you know about this? 
You know about it and you don't arrest them? Why should we? We have an understanding with them. They produce the documents and let us know all the details. And we let some of their clients go. Some we catch later. That's how occasionally a really big fish ends up in the net. Oh, police. Okay, I'll look in some newspapers. Bye for now. Take care. Oh yeah, your aunt sends her greetings. It was her idea that I should call you. Sometimes when I speak with her, I get the unpleasant feeling that she can read my mind. That's typical of her. My aunt and her cards. I told her to leave you alone. Oh no, she's actually a nice old lady. Sure, just a little spooky. <laughs> Take care, Max. Reading Russian is no problem for me. The results of all the match... Why would I pull it out? Two days ago, I left a bag with several French books at the bus stop on Zagorodny Prospect. If you find it, leave a message for me on the notice board outside the library. Ah, foreign language books. That's the advert Lara spoke about. Zagorodny Prospect, that rings a bell. Sure, I was there a few moments ago. It's where the library is. If I understood the newspaper advertisement correctly, this is where I should get the contact information for the forger of documents. I should have a look around. An advert for a Russian youth magazine. Pop stars, bands, posters, they're the same everywhere. There are some adverts and messages stuck here. You can have my old kitchen cupboards if you take them with you. Half a block from the Fontanka Canal, Anatoly Makarov. That won't be it. Volodya, I was waiting for two hours. Don't even bother to call me. Still yours, Yelena. No, that doesn't look like the message I'm looking for. I can't read this. I should move the things covering it. Wanted. Buyer for a large quantity of wall clocks? No thanks, don't want that. I'll exchange a two-bedroom flat in the center of Petersburg for a larger one in the suburbs. I'll cover the possible price difference, Sergei Convict. No, that's not the right message. Antique furniture, lamps, carpets. Interested in everything. Admiral Tayeskaya Street and Sofia Second Hand Shop. No mention of books, really. Slightly used Moskvich. Flaming orange color. Reasonable price. Trailer included. Garaged. I don't think that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for lodgings. Ideally city center. Must be cheap and available now. I don't need to move this. There's nothing interesting beneath it. Wanted. Buyer for a large quantity of wall clocks. Inexpensive English and German tutoring. That looks interesting, but it doesn't mention literature. Now, now this looks interesting. English and other foreign language comic books on sale. If interested, contact me through the barman at the Rock Cafe in the Makarov's Embankment. I don't need to move this. There's
my saviour from punk psychopaths and smelly iguanas. What will you have? It's on me. I haven't really thanked you yet. Don't mention it. Moreover, the iguana was quite useful in the end. And what's your name? It's not often a stranger helps me out around here. Maximilian Durand. And you are Nada, aren't you? I heard that jerk yelling at you. Yeah, Nada, Maximilian. Would you mind if I called you Max? I'd certainly prefer that. Well, Max, I'm glad I met you. What will you have? Nada, I hear you sell some comic books. I'm sorry, but they're all gone. Well, perhaps we're talking about different comics. I'm talking about the sort that haven't been written yet. And I'm willing to pay well for them. But those aren't the cheapest, Max. A thousand dollars? Come on, no more than 400. It's good it's you. I'll need a photo. Danny, Max, what are you involved in? You don't want to know. Thanks for helping. I'll bring the photo. I'm sorry, I really didn't mean to... <laughs> Stupid tourists. My photo shouldn't be thrown in the basket. A photo of me, passport sized. I came back because of the comic. So, it's a business matter. What a pity. You were quite nice. Here's the photo. And money. If you don't have cash, I've got a terminal here. I can charge your card. I've got a card, but I really wouldn't like to find out later that there's more money missing than expected. Damn it, Max. This business is about trust. Trust me or get lost. You just pissed me off. I'm sorry, Nada. I didn't mean to offend you. Here's my visa card. Good. Any special requests for the name of the hero of the comic? You're French, aren't you? How about Henri Latour? A nice name, isn't it? I think I can find such a comic. Latour? Could be. All right, just wait a moment now. With proper equipment, it's only a matter of minutes. Here you are, and here's the card. I misclicked and charged you 600. You aren't angry, are you? I guess you won't tell the police. Moreover, you got the entrance visa too. Without it, the passport wouldn't help much. Hmm, so it will cost me 600. Why doesn't that surprise me? I hope we won't see each other again. We've never seen each other, Max. And I'm sorry about that. Every somber story has its beginning, its time and its place. But it also has its end, Max. Its time to turn over the last page.
Good morning. I... Mr. Duran, welcome to our monastery. I am the caretaker here. The abbot asked me to inform you that he and your brother are looking forward to seeing you. Andre, where is he? Is he all right? Of course. Why wouldn't he be all right? The abbot himself is taking care of him. He is a special guest here, just like you are, Mr. Durand. You will find him in the cloister. Climb those stairs. The abbot will be there to welcome you. Great, thank you. This is a place of some religious significance. What it is exactly, what it's consecrated to, who knows? What should I do? I'm not the praying kind, really. Just one little step and you could disappear forever. An older monk. His expression is hard to describe. It's definitely not unfriendly. Yes? Do you need something, Mr. Durand? Have you spoken to the abbot? I just wanted to ask about your monastery, about your community. We are not so special. We simply live a quiet life, and by meditation and work, try to reach our spiritual goals. And what exactly is your goal? Knowledge, Mr. Durand. Enlightenment. But I'm only a caretaker here. The abbot can certainly give you much better answers to such questions. It hangs over the gorge like an ominous claw. Maxine Durand, if I'm not mistaken. Welcome to our world, Max, if I may call you that. Your brother's around. You'll meet him soon. Well, thanks for the friendly welcome. Perhaps I should make it clear why I'm here. We already know that from your brother. You know? Andre told you? Why does that surprise you? Max, we have great respect here for the written word. And if your stay within these walls helps the two of you write your book, you're more than welcome. We like our solitude. But how could we stand in the way of your project to capture on paper the way of life of the ancient and forgotten monasteries of Scandinavia before they vanish into history? Forgotten Scandinavian monasteries? Oh, yeah, sure. My brother and me are very grateful to you that we can come and do some research in your monastery. Don't even mention it. Your room is ready. It's in the cloister right across the courtyard. Andre's room is in another part of the monastery. We don't have many guests here. Once you've freshened up after your journey, we'll be happy to see you in the dining room. I'll be happy to come. No water left in it. It's dry as a bone. We haven't had a guest here for a long time. True. Perhaps it is sign the change is coming. Looks like the gargoyle dried up a long time ago. It would be a good idea to clean up after the journey, and I'm quite looking forward to dinner. The search for the paintings can wait. I'll attract less attention later anyway. Max Durand, artist, one-time forger, sometime professor, currently serving the devil in this godforsaken place. That's me. Dark circles under my eyes, stubble. The last few days haven't done me any good. Metal wash basin. Definitely not luxurious, but better than nothing. Washing without water can be a complicated affair.
an ordinary hard mattress. Now is not the right time to sleep. Washing without water can be a complicated affair. An ordinary iron stove, extinguished. An empty kettle, you could probably boil water in it. Originally a stable, now a forlorn shelter. Strange. Have we met before? Certainly not, Mr. Durand, but he can't tell you that because he hasn't got a tongue born that way, poor man. Another example of the absurd architecture of this monastery. It's as if they piled new parts onto the ruins of long-forgotten walls. Do you need anything, Mr. Durand? May I ask the young man who works here a few questions? I think it would be better to leave him alone. He is meditating upon his sins, and it wouldn't be wise to distract him. You're probably right. I should fetch the water first. What should I do with this stove plate? I should fill it with water first. Now I just need to warm it up. An ordinary iron stove, extinguished.
reach inside? Why would I do that? It's starting to burn nicely now. I guess the water is warm now. Ah, the kettle is quite hot. I need an oven glove or something. There must be one somewhere. He's studying something. The writing must be very small and hard to read because he needs the help of a magnifying glass. Something's telling me that studying isn't the only activity in which these monks are involved. Can I ask you what book that is? It looks rare. Of course, my friend. It's Gragas, published in the 14th century. A gem, isn't it? No doubt about it. Do you need anything, friend? No thanks. An ordinary towel cloth. It's still a bit wet. It's as if time stopped here. I hope we get out before winter comes. Once snow is on the ground, nobody will be able to leave. Looks like they should do some urgent repairs. Having the floor only fixed by the wooden bars is not looking very secure. Damaging it some more will attract a lot of attention. I don't see a reason to do that now. The entrance to an old crypt. The door is rusty, but it looks as if it's still used occasionally. Why would I go there? I don't think anyone would hide a stolen painting in this tomb, or anything else for that matter. I would expect at least a trace of Christianity, the cross, the halo, but an angel with wings, book, and a sword? It's like a gothic version of Nemesis. Why should I put hay in my pocket?
What is it? Something appeared on the steamed up mirror. It says there is a message hidden for me at the shrine in the woods. There's a message. Dark circles under my eyes, stubble. The last few days haven't done me any good. I didn't doubt for a moment that you would make it here. Dear me, Andre, are you mad? Forgotten Scandinavian monasteries? Where on earth do you think you are? This isn't a sightseeing tour. These people are thieves and probably wouldn't think twice about murder. And you come here to the middle of nowhere, where cell phones don't work, and you can't call for help with a stupid story about writing a book? Don't you understand that our lives are in danger? That they could bury us where nobody will ever find us? I'm glad to see you too. Have you finished? Damn it, sometimes you behave like a ten-year-old. There's no point getting upset. You wanted to be here, and now you are. On your own, you might not have made it this far. If this is your way of saying thank you, you're welcome. Look, I'm sorry. I worry about you. Don't be angry. You did well. What have you found out? Not much, really. I've looked around and talked to a few people. Anyway, we should both do our own thing. If we work separately, They'll have a harder time keeping an eye on both of us. You're probably right, but be careful. Don't play the hero. Understood. Can we get some food now? I'm famished. As hard as I look, I still can't see a place on the shrine where the message could be hidden. A bit of light can't do any harm. At least I can have a good look at the shrine. Hmm. There are a lot of small, fragile ornaments which could be interesting. But they're too small. I need something to have a closer look at it. This book of yours. How many monasteries have you been to? What was the last one before you came here? Well, I've been to a few, but if you don't mind, I would prefer to talk about yours. Not at all. That's why you're here. Ask away. Okay. How many people live here? I haven't seen many. For example, I thought you'd all gather around the table for supper. The brothers didn't want to disturb our conversation. Of course, there's normally more than three people at the table. I think you meant four brother. It's sad that the man managing all our material possessions can't count to four. Forgive me, you are correct. I'm tired today. There's eleven of us in all. But soon there will be one less. One of the brethren is leaving us. Leaving? Why? It's become clear that we don't share certain values, certain common goals. That is why he's leaving. We do not hold anyone here who doesn't share our beliefs. Everyone is free to go as they wish. I see. Talking about your goals and values, what are they? What do you seek to achieve here? We seek to live a life of harmony. That's all there is to it. But that is no small thing. That sounds very appealing, but it doesn't tell me very much about your faith. Are you part of the Christian Church? What do you believe in? Our faith is a personal thing, and I'm not sure. Tell us more. It's not a secret. We want to know everything. Everything? Really? Of course. Is there a reason why you wouldn't want to? I suppose you've come a long way, and it would be impolite to fob you off with a trite explanation. 
at the risk of some misapprehensions. Tell me, Max, what do you think about death? Sometimes it comes too soon, sooner than it should. And that seems to you, as to so many others, unjust? His wife died several years ago. I apologize. I'm sorry. I understand. But tell me, do you think there is anything after death? I don't know. At the moment I'm just trying to get by here. I'll let you know about heaven, hell, or anywhere else when I get there. Can we change the subject? Forgive me. I can see I have upset you. That wasn't my intention. But you asked what we believe in. And I'm trying to explain. We believe that how you meet your death is of the utmost importance. Have you ever heard of Ars Moriendi? The Art of Dying? Yes, it's a book dating from the Middle Ages. It is our Bible, if you will forgive the expression. It contains the teachings that we believe and which we practice. Because of them, we will be rewarded at the moment of our death. Rewarded? By what? It's getting late. Perhaps we could continue our discussion tomorrow, at lunchtime. Of course. I look forward to it. Well, we didn't find out much about the paintings. Forget the paintings for a moment. I don't like the way things are going here. Why did you push him to give you details of their faith? That sent a chill down my spine. Why? There's nothing unusual about people believing in the afterlife? Didn't you notice the way he changed after you said surely it was no secret? He started to talk about what they believe in. About that book of theirs. Well, I don't remember provoking him. His whole manner changed. He started talking freely as if he had come to some decision. As if he realized he could tell us everything. Why would a criminal suddenly make up his mind to do that? Do you think they want to hurt us somehow? I think we'll be lucky to get out of here alive. Barricade the door before you sleep. God willing, I'll see you tomorrow. I have to arrange one more thing. You're taking things way too seriously. But I'll be careful. Good night. Something's in the air. Something's coming. Excuse me, do you oh, think I could borrow your magnifying glass? Go ahead. You can get it, brother. Here it is. After Thanks. After all we've achieved, any weaknesses now will bring us punishment. This isn't the right time. Let us talk about this later, shall we? Why put it off? Tell me, do you think you are worthy successor to your predecessors? As hard as I look, I still can't see a place on the shrine where the message could be hidden. The hand of the spy in a cloak. I can't feel anything here. Actually, the stone is a bit loose. Eureka! Let's have a close look at you. What have you got there? I wonder what it all means. Misty mirrors. Secret messages beneath a stone mosaic. No, there isn't anything else there. It says here to look in the crypt in the garden and find a secret passage there. And the stolen paintings, I believe. I should reply by morning if I want to cooperate and leave a message hidden in the shrine. It looks like I found an ally in this forlorn place. I think it might be good to have a look inside the crypt tonight. Moreover, I should give him an answer by morning.
Welcome, Max. Welcome to my kingdom. There is a reward for you, but first you have to earn it. You must see through the veil of ignorance and accept my truth. A stone tomb, here lies avarice, is written on it. Here lies avarice, the symbol of scales. The link with the librarian's notes is clear. If the librarian's comments are on the other tombs, then lack of faith must be the missing fifth password. A kind of altar. Those ruts on the side served only one purpose in a place like this, so that the blood of human sacrifices could flow more easily into the pots underneath. Hmm. The inscription, Here lies spiritual pride. A tomb with the words, here lies impatience. Yes, I saw this word in the notes from the library. Here lies despair. Of course, the last words in the librarian's notes. I should have another look at them. Interesting. A paraphrase of Ascension? The figure has a slit throat. Underneath there's a coat of arms with some symbols. If the message was right, this is where the secret door should be. All I have to do is open it. The librarian's notes. I have to look at everything very closely. I don't want to miss anything. Perhaps this verse could explain it. You are only one of many. Thus go together with thy fellow man, for hope and determination, for belief and destiny, today, tomorrow, forever. Then you will find redemption. Along with the computer on the table, it's the only indication that I'm not in the Middle Ages. Undoubtedly the original. The works of art in this room are priceless. Undoubtedly. Thousands of people see the original painting every day. At least I hope it's the original.
thousands of people. It's the original painting. I wonder if anyone has a clue how many worthless fakes are in galleries all over the world. It's the original painting. I wonder if anyone has a clue how many... A cupboard full of junk. Here it is, the painting from the Hermitage. And these other paintings are exhibited there as well. Looks like they must have replaced more paintings than we thought. I can't just carry them around in this place. I must work out how to get them out of here unnoticed. I should let my secret helper know I'm working on that and then have a rest. I'm too tired to figure it out right now. I'd better leave the box where it is. The delivery slip says they've just prepared it for dispatch. There's no reason to rip the address from the box? Interesting. This box is to be shipped to Rotterdam. Consignment number RTCS234456. I wonder who is to collect it there. This won't be easy to open. What could be in there? Something important, no doubt. The browser is open. How it managed to connect to the internet, underground in the middle of a forest, is a mystery to me. Perhaps this brotherhood isn't so out of touch with the modern world after all. I really have more important tasks to do than writing emails and surfing the net. Perhaps I should use the medieval ink pot on the table to write an answer to the message from the shrine. I could use some help. I can't wait to see Ostankovich's face when he sees not just the stolen de la Roche, but these two other paintings. If I get out of here alive, that is. I found what I was looking for. I just have to figure out how to get it out of here. As soon as I do that, I'm gone. What's next? My answer to the message from the shrine. I wonder what I'll learn in the morning. I have to check it first tomorrow. No, there isn't anything else there. It's not that I would love to stay here overnight, but I don't have a choice. I can't do much now except wait for tomorrow and hope there's an answer to my note. I hope this night is the first and last here.
those dreams. Good thing it's morning. This reminds me of the sleepless night I spent as a child waiting to see if the statue really has moved or whether it was just a figment of my imagination. Well, you won't find out much like this. Do you know what time it is? Almost two o'clock. Two o'clock? I've never slept so long in my life. And I've got a headache. Did they put something in our food? I doubt that. I managed to get up without any trouble. I found the paintings. There are three of them. All from the Hermitage. Better yet, I found an ally here. Once he's safely away, we can get out of here ourselves. So don't take any more chances. Have you had lunch? Yes, I have. It was just me and the abbot. He seemed lost in thought. When you didn't show up, he decided to continue the conversation later. Good. We'll meet at dinner. In the meantime, take care. I hope nobody's discovered the hiding place. I should have checked it earlier. There's an answer there. Nobody's discovered our secret correspondence yet. It says here I should switch off the alarm and cause a stir. When you factor in that I must get both the stolen paintings and Andre out of there, I have a lot to do before midnight. Recently I felt just like I carry out other people's orders. However, something tells me that if I do what's written in the message, I'll get rid of all my current problems at the same time. Damn, I should distract the caretaker so I can get inside the crypt. His keys would be useful too. The monastery caretaker is obviously enjoying the last rays of autumn sun. Caretaker's keys. It seems the abbot trusts him. He undoubtedly has access to the whole monastery. I can't take his keys when he sits directly next to them. Nice day. Certainly, it's beautiful here. That's one reason why I go back to the civilized world so seldom. Looks like they should do some urgent repairs. Having the floor only fixed by the wooden bars is not looking very secure. You have to be careful, Mr. Durand. We don't have the money for major repairs. I'd better look at it before it collapses completely. I'm sorry. If there is something interesting in the crypt, this is the right moment to search it. I'll borrow them for a moment. An ordinary toolbox. Looks like the caretaker was about to repair something here. These tools could be useful to me. A toolbox with two drawers. What could be in this drawer? I can't see anything interesting there. 
Now, is there something here that could be useful? I can't open the cover. It's stuck or secured somehow. Hmm, a metal box. What could be inside it? I can't open the cover. It's stuck or secured somehow. This is the only place where the central controls for the alarm could be. I need to find a way to get the stolen paintings out of here. Well, what have we got here? A bunch of keys. The monastery caretaker can get in everywhere with them. This must be the main switch for the security setup. Hmm, so they can't do without modern technology after all. This controls the various security devices around the monastery. Now it's switched off, it'll be much easier to move around unnoticed. I can't open the box with my bare hands. This isn't the place where raw power would solve anything. I've taken the nail out. Let's see what's inside, and more important, how much space is left. It bears a resemblance to certain African statuettes, but I'm no expert on the subject. I can't take them just like that. They're no use to me and someone might miss them. Good, that must work. This is the only way to get the paintings to the outside civilized world and to Ostankovich. I must write him an email so that he knows the destination and consignment number to intercept the delivery and get the paintings back. I'd better leave the box where it is. The delivery slip says they've just prepared it for dispatch. Well, if there's no other way, but I must make sure to put everything back as it was. I'll write the consignment number for Ostankovich so that he can pick it up in Rotterdam.
An ordinary bench. This is where the monks would meditate and read. Who knows what these strange monks actually read? There's nothing I can do with the bench. I have to return those keys. Come, Max. The abbot is waiting for you at dinner. So, we've met again. Enjoy your meal. You don't eat much yourself, do you? I don't eat much, that's true. But where did we leave off last time? Uh, yes, of course. Uh, we were talking about death. Could we change the subject? There must be a better topic of conversation. Certainly. But I'd like to know... Didn't Max put it clearly enough? We aren't going to talk about death anymore. But Andre, there's no need for that. It's not polite. No, forgive me. I was impolite. Perhaps your brother could suggest a suitable topic. Let's forget it. Why don't you tell us about your plans for the future? It seems to me you could pay more attention to the outside world. Of course. That's very interesting. In the near future, many changes will take place. But before that, we must purify ourselves from sin, from the past, from the weak stones that could destabilize the whole structure. Uh, that purification, is that a religious ritual? Not really. In our case, it's more of a physical than spiritual thing. I have a question for you, Monsieur Durand. Is a person who commits great evil unintentionally and without knowing it guilty? Will they be forgiven? Certainly. How can a person be guilty if they do something unawares? It's good you see it that way. Very good. I also believe that the hand that holds the tool is guilty, not the tool itself. Listen, are you hinting at something? I must admit I don't quite understand you. This is going nowhere. I need some sleep. We've got a lot to do tomorrow. Of course, I understand. I won't take up any more of your time. I'll see you tomorrow. Have you gone crazy? You can't behave like that. You just order him around. I just didn't feel like talking to him about this stuff. What's wrong with you? You're acting strangely. Are we really going to discuss my behavior now? Don't we have more important things to do? Wait a minute. If everything goes according to plan, we're out of here tonight, Andre. But before that, I have a little surprise for the abbot. When you see the signal, it's time to run. Max, what are you going to do? You aren't planning to do something you'll be sorry about later, are you? I don't know, but things are definitely going to get hot around here. Trust me on that. We'll meet at the car. Get there, no matter what it takes. We won't have much time. When I see the sign, get to the car. Got it. You really don't need my help? No. Go pack your things. And Andre, take care. Hey, they must have some animals around. Quite dangerous not to have it stored away properly. If this caught fire, it would cause a lot of trouble. Good, come on. I hope they manage to put out the fire before the whole place burns down. And now let's leave quickly.
André. André, where are you? Oh, God! Return to where you came from, Max. Never look back. Nobody needs you here anymore. Nobody. Not even your brother. Forget everything that happened. Forget your brother. He's gone, just as you predicted. Good. He went in the right direction. He won't get lost. Remember, nothing must happen to him. The direction is right. To be on the safe side, I'll catch up with him and make sure nothing happens to him. Yes, do that. But he mustn't see you. And what about the brothers? The caretaker and the other two are probably already in town. They'll wait for us in New York. And the others? Is it finished? I think so. The fire spread faster than I expected. There will be only ashes tomorrow morning. I'd better go back and make sure that nothing was left. We don't want anyone to see. They'll be consumed by a blaze that we didn't start. Excellent. And who's going to investigate the fire? Has he been briefed? It's possible no one will notice the burnt-out ruins for a few days. If no one reports the smoke to the fire service, it could even take weeks. Captain Rockenham will get the case. We've worked with him before. There won't be any problems. Excellent. The fire will consume all traces of the past, and we'll rise up like a phoenix from the ashes. Purified and stronger than ever. Ready to blend in with a new age. About time. Our seclusion has weakened us and made us flabby. But I am completely satisfied with your work. As soon as we move to our new home, I'll talk to our master. You have proven yourself worthy of taking the ultimate step. Thank you, master. You're too kind. And what happens to Durand and the policewoman now? My sight doesn't reach that far anymore, my friend. Their fate is no longer in our hands. Are you okay? I'm on the plane. We land in Petersburg in a few minutes. Has Andre got in touch with you? Who? Listen, Ostankovich has seized the paintings. He'll keep his word and leave you alone. Both of us will be left in peace. That's great, but I'll only celebrate after I get in touch with my brother. We had to leave the monastery in Finland in a hurry, and then we split up. Hang on. What are you talking about? This Andre. Is that a joke? Damn it, Lara, cut the jokes. I'm not in the mood for them. But Max, your brother Andre died in childhood. You took me to your family tomb last year. We lit a candle together. Dead? How could he be dead when... But I am... Are you all right? I'll call Ostankovich and tell him to pick you up at the airport. Don't go anywhere, please. Can you hear me? Max! Max! Max, do you hear me? Max, pull yourself together. Only fools drown themselves in their dreams. Forget them. Listen, it's me, Andre. I must go and see my aunt. I hope that she's all right. 
Did you talk to him? No, but I talked to the doctor and he said Max would be fine. What do you think? Will he be all right? When I wanted to teach you the things your grandmother taught your mother and me, you laughed, despite the talent in your blood. Now suddenly you want help. You don't want to close your eyes and ears anymore. The guards are no longer a joke. You're asking your crazy old aunt what she thinks because of this man. Of course I still don't believe it. I just wanted... I don't really know what I wanted. I... Oh, forgive me. I don't know what to believe. If I was unfair to you, I'm sorry. Will you help me? You care for him a lot, my little girl, don't you? So much so that you would believe in fate. Fine. You can see the card on the table. His fate is in it. He chose it himself. He never looked at it. But his fate will catch up with him anyway. Whatever it is. No. Oh my god, not that. Death. Transformation. If death is his fate, there's no escape from it. I must go to the asylum at once. He's in danger. I must see him. I'll definitely come and visit my aunt again. St. Anna Sanatorium. Finally. I hope I'm not too late. I need to get inside the asylum, not someone's locked car. Inside, there's a parking pass issued for... It's difficult to read. Petrov. Yes, it says Dr. Petrov. This intercom is the key to getting inside the sanatorium. The gate is probably locked electronically. I could climb over it, but that won't help Max. Yes? What do you want? We don't receive uninvited visitors. Have you got an appointment? An appointment? Well, yes, of course. My name is Durand. Larissa Durand. Mrs. Durand? Yes, I think we have a Durand here. But the appointment, are you sure it was for today? At this time? That's strange. No, it wasn't for this time. But I've flown all the way here from France and the flight was late. Can't you make an exception? I've traveled across half of Europe. Well, if a doctor sent for you and you've come all this way... Still, I should have been told about it. What was the doctor's name? Of course, I talked to Dr. Petrov. Petrov, of course. No wonder there's nothing written down here. Come in then, I'll call him for you. I can't say I like the way you got in, Miss Svetlova. On the other hand, I appreciate that you confess to it at once. And I understand your concern for your friend. He is your friend, I suppose? Yes. I worry about him, Doctor. Is it serious? Could he hurt himself? He claims that in the last few days he talked and travelled with his brother. With a brother who died when they were both still children. So it won't surprise you if I tell you that this is serious. Is it some kind of paranoia? Will it get better? It's too early to draw any conclusions yet. He's under close observation and mild sedatives. I haven't spotted any self-destructive tendencies so far. And as for the trigger mechanism, it could be stress, for example. How long could it last? The human mind, Miss Svetlova, isn't a mechanism like a watch. He could be fine in a few weeks, maybe months. But it could be the case that... Uh...
You? This is an illusion. It's just a dream. Come on, you're just too intelligent to believe that, Max. Who are you? What have you done to Andre? Who I am? I was there when night swallowed Sodom and Gomorrah. I watched while deadly gas spread over the trenches at Ypres. I was at your father's bedside when he left this world. You? Death? I am the angel of death, Max. I am the shepherd. I am the boatman. I am Charon, if you like. I don't kill, I transport. But... why Andre? Where is he? Andre has been dead for many years, Max. The appearance is how you imagine he would look, as the adult he never grew up to be. To carry out my plan, I had to direct you somewhat. I played with your mind a little. I let you have your brother back for a few days, and changed a few memories. So, his whole adult life, his graduation, the month in Madrid, none of that really happened? Who gave you the right? Who gave you the right? Sure, to you it might seem, what's the word, violent? Perhaps you think I took advantage of you. Maybe it would comfort you to know that you served a higher purpose. Took part in great and important matters, Max. Higher goals? You give me my brother back, and then you take him again, and it's as if he was never here? Who do you think I am? Huh? We all are some damn puppets for you to play with? Puppets? Yes, possibly. But the parts you play, Max, aren't meant to bring me pleasure. You wrong me in that respect. Besides, back on the lake, I could have taken you as well, Max. What I do doesn't bring any pleasure to me. It's nothing personal. You think that you can give me my brother back and then you can... You killed him the second time. You monster. You. What was that? What were those bangs? Is something going on in there? There's no reason to panic. The patient is sedated. The noise must have come from outside. Uh, this must be here in case of fire. Or if the door was blocked or something like that. Why would I do that? I don't think the doctor would be happy to see it. It won't open. The door to Max's room. I don't really care what's behind this door. Dr. Petrov. A serious looking, mature man. Perhaps somewhat tired. His work here must be hard. Something's happening in there. Well, I don't know. Like I told you, he should be sedative, passive. And that's supposed to calm me down? Is this how a sedated person is supposed to behave? Why are you here? Go and do something! Look, let's not do anything hasty. That noise could have been anything. Something might have fallen on the floor. Or it might have come from outside. The door is still locked. I can't get in like that. Dr. Petrov should be informed about it. Something's happening in there. Well, I don't know. Well, maybe you're right, Doctor. But all the same, we should do something. Anything. We can't just stand here doing nothing. It's locked. That's really strange. The staff are forbidden to lock the doors in this part of the building. You must see that something's going on. You must intervene. Well, I... Like I told you, 
the sedatives he should be calm. Don't worry. Listen, Petrov. I'm telling you plainly that the door is locked. You must have a master key on you. I want it now. Key? Of course I've got a key. Here it is. But this really isn't a good idea. We shouldn't go in there. The key won't turn. How come? What's going on? What shall we do then? Look, I think we should keep quiet for a while. I'm sure he'll calm down. Let's give him some time, agreed? You really don't have anyone on duty here? Some attendants? Surely you must have made some preparations for this kind of situation. Of course someone's on duty, but not in this department. There's usually no danger here. If you insist, I'll go and get someone. Although I still think it's not necessary. Wait here, and please, no silliness. Don't try to get in the room by yourself. Does that help? If you think smashing things will help you deal with the anger, go ahead. I can wait. Why? I want to know. What were your damned higher goals? Why all that? Those paintings, Max, are the key. Under normal circumstances, nobody can see me except people soon to pass away. That has certain unpleasant consequences. One of them being that my appearance finds its way into the paintings of dying artists from time to time. At such times, my faithful intervene and destroy the painting, or if there is time, tell the painter to redo it. So that murdered scientist Abramchikov and that new machine of his would have uncovered your appearance in the paintings from the Hermitage? It's nice to talk with someone so quick on the uptake. Yes, that is so, Max. That's why I had them exchanged. But I got the paintings back, so you failed anyway. You did all this in vain. You lost in the end, you poor devil. You people. If we just replace the paintings, sooner or later someone would find out that they weren't the originals and a number of questions would arise. This way we only borrowed them for a little while. I'm sure it won't surprise you if I tell you that we modified them a little bit. We have the technical equipment too. Take my word for it, no X-ray device will ever detect the differences now. So all this was planned from the beginning? The originals are back in the gallery and they're harmless. And all thanks to me. Exactly, Max. Thanks to you. Everything is back as it should be. But that's not all. The Brotherhood lost sight of its original purpose. Discipline was going to pieces. We even had a novice trying to sell paintings we took for personal gain. That's why purification had to come. Purification through fire. Purification? The fire I started? Somebody died there? No, that can't be true. Human weakness again. What do a few apostates matter? Who will miss them? I couldn't do it. And I didn't want to defile one of the faithful brethren by making him do it, so it remained for you. You should be proud of yourself, Max. I'm a murderer? The way you care for the lives of others is really remarkable. Maybe you should care more about your own life, too. What is it again? You have this strange ability to attract danger, Max. If it wasn't for me, you'd be dead. But if I had died, it wouldn't have been good for you, would it? Who would have done all your dirty work? I was always nearby, Max. I needed to stay close to you. That's the reason why I entered your life in this form. It's great you can explain everything so well. I didn't always have to step in. Do you remember beneath the hermitage? Do you remember what you felt when the ice-cold water was filling your lungs? You were smart, and that's why they found you in time, without any intervention on my part. It's a pity you didn't always act that way. Do you know what I think? It was all pure chance. It was mere coincidence the bridge gave way when I stepped on it. Fortunately, they found me in time. Just pure chance. Luck, chance, 
Do you really believe that such things exist? When you neglect to secure a three-meter ladder, and you avoid a crushed skull only thanks to a friendly piece of advice? Is that truly luck? So, I should really thank you for looking after me so well? Do you realize what you're saying? You should listen to yourself sometime. Let's not talk about me. Who do you pay attention to? You're interested in what the cards say, aren't you? That's good. Such knowledge can help a person a lot. Why are you telling me these things anyway? You're trying to manipulate me, confuse me, stop me from seeing you as the monster that you really are. I don't need to make myself look better in your eyes. I am who I am. It's really easy for you, isn't it? You just enter people's lives and turn them upside down. You push them to do things they would never do of their own accord. And now, you leave me quietly with the blood of innocent people on my hands and a head full of unreal memories. You bastard! How am I to live with this? It seems your question includes its own answer, Max. An ordinary insulated piece of wire. Another thing that contributes to the coziness of this place. I can't remember I put the table leg to the wire. A mirror. Perhaps it's here so that the inmates can have a good look at themselves, at the human wreckage that ended up confined inside these walls. There's nothing to fear, Max. Shards. Glass keys from the last door of no return. Do you really want to end things like this? You think that suicide will help? Stop acting like a madman! Can you hear me? Of course, that's it. That's the way to solve the problem. To fix it. Find the way out. But it's high. Too high. That won't work. Comfort is really not an issue in this place. There's no coming back once you go down that path, Max. And who the hell led me to it? I hope you've thought it through. A broken off table leg. I almost killed myself because of it. What a shame I didn't really kill myself. Now I heard another crash. I must break the door and get in at once. Thank you. 
Although nobody will ever know about all the effort Larissa Svetlova made to find the stolen paintings, her work was not in vain. Because she carried out her Interpol duties satisfactorily, despite the complications caused by this case, her record remained unblemished, and she was promoted three weeks later. Malicious gossip claims that this was due to the intervention of Colonel Ostankovich, who meanwhile received his long-awaited award from the President. After a few weeks in hospital, Max recovered enough to return to France, where Lara was waiting for him. He started painting again, and successfully sells his creations, this time as originals that bear his name. However, he hasn't shown his masterpiece to anyone yet. In that painting, he tries to express what he feels for someone who has meant a lot to him for some time now. With every new stroke, it's becoming clearer to him what his next step should be.